games, video 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 and this is Isle Thumbs 50, and I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. And I'm Jake Rodkin. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. we're going to talk about video games, because that's yeah. what we love the most. We do love a lot of video games. I hate them, Well, actually. some video games. Yeah. Well, I, I broke my recent trend of actually playing video games, so... <laughs> you had a one-week yeah. trend. Well, I don't think that it constitutes was two, a trend. It was, like, it was two weeks, man. Oh, okay. But I thought that, I thought that I'd go back to sort of my archetypal classic style for this episode. Yeah, so, right. to bring it back. People asked for classic Jake to make a return one last time, so here I am. I Breaking played nothing. Breaking the streak. Yeah. Enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you guys—that's like games. when a, like a, a football team that's lost like three years in a row and they win twice in a row and everybody gets really excited. <laughs> and the, yeah, that and was my it's... college. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So actually, my PS3, uh, which I was using to play Uncharted, is now sitting on a chair. Uh, yeah, you apparently lost the power. Cable? I lost How the power you, cable to my PS3. Uh, it was just—it was the hand of God saying, "What are you doing?" I saw that this was on and a video game was being played. <laughs> Please bury this under a pile of books and socks on a chair. And then I did. Uh, it'll be back, though. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad God arbitrarily decided right. to tell you to do that. And yeah. you did it. Uh, <laughs> does yeah. God not tell you socks. guys what to do? No. More socks. <laughs> Perhaps some dark socks would up the appearance of I got like pile. a sheet here, God. No, use the socks. Use the socks. <laughs> This is a good topic of discussion. Yeah, this is good. We're going out on a high note. So, here. in the downloadable this content is... thread, I'll post a picture of my PS3 under a pile of socks and books. Will you? Yeah. All right, do it. Do it. Dare you? Do it now. Hmm. So, uh, so you guys were. This episode is actually late for a very particular reason, other than the fact that Chris fucked up his computer. Yeah. <laughs> it's initially late because uh, we all we've been playing still is Torchlight. Right. Which I, you know, I could keep doing that. Like, I, don't get me wrong. It's yeah. not like I need any other games to play in my life ever again. Mm -hmm. um, so when we come back for the Out of Thumbs 10-year reunion, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you guys will be like, Torchlight yeah. and, yeah. I keep an old PC around just for Torchlight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, but also... But also we decided to, to get, when Dragon Age came out, maybe we should play that for a day. Yeah. So that we could actually talk about something that isn't Torchlight for the third straight episode. Um, we owe it to ourselves. Yeah, and to you, the readers. So we did play it. Did you beat it? No, it's a long game. Yeah. Nick's probably a lot farther than I am. I did am. you beat it, though? Uh, no. Oh. So what do you guys think? Does it, is it, because you, I, I know we spent, I beat a woman. We spent pretty much the first year <laughs> of Idle Thumbs uh, down on this game. Yeah, well, I mean, so, yeah, I it, it we're hearing the, the aspects that I was down on, I don't, I think I'm still down on, uh -huh. probably. So but, like, well, uh, some of the aspects we were down on were purely localized to the trailers. I mean, some true. of them were just invented, basically, on that's the part true. of the marketing team to sell a game sort that of. is a hilariously old-school RPG. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. There are parts of this well, game. My, 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 hmm. I was just, just going to say, I guess the very first trailer was right. the one that was basically just like, oh, it's Lord of the Rings, kind of. Which yeah. is still basically true. It's still true. And yeah. that's actually the, the part of the game that, that irks me. Yeah. That, that, that sort of holds it back from being a game that I absolutely the love. I am generic. Right. Yeah, it is it is that. It's like a good game wrapped in that crap that uh, I, I wish you know, wasn't was on there. a good, good game? Yeah, it's like a good, good game uh, on the good game scale. So... Would, would you... What would be your, your wish? My wish? If I had like three wishes, what's, like, what's your, your Dragon Age I wish? Like unlimited lollipops. I don't know. <laughs> Drink this Dragon Age potion and make a wish. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a Dragon yeah, Age that's... potion here. It came in a box, right? Full of hay. Thanks for that. Wait, I thought box. you were going to say full of hair. <laughs> also, also that it was fucked Jesus. up. Maybe there's yeah, some, you know, some kind of creature. Came, this potion came in a box full yeah. of hair. I got a box in the mail yesterday after after I'd already bought Dragon Age off Steam anyway, but it had Dragon Age in it and, uh, and some hair. It also had lots of hay, and I opened it up and got hay everywhere, all over my apartment. It was unexpected and stupid, so that was a great way to give me a bottle. Here's your first impression, reviewer. Yeah. Ah, exactly. oh, what is this? Exactly. I was coughing. It was really, really how to awesome. make your apartment or office space look like the world of Dragon Age. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, then I told Nick, and he kept reporting back every time he saw hay in the world. <laughs> I still haven't seen any, so... Found some yeah. hay. More hay over here. Yep. There's like a trap door with hay over it, you know. Maybe that's what they was were going for. Was there a potion for. inside? 
Um, Containing gluca luca luca. <laughs> gluca luca. Yeah, the luca. first ingredient in this potion is glucuronolactone. Mm. So, <laughs> which has a nice little yeah, that's like a '60s like doo-wop lyric or something. <laughs> Maybe you know what I mean, right? Yeah. I mean, like the th- like the the three guys in the background, right. like in the backing <laughs> right. vocals, the luca backup. luca. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the sort of like weird lactone. Yeah. It's the lactones, Lact- the lactones, la- <laughs> gluca luca, and the, the lactones. Gluca in parentheses, right? Well, it's gluca luca and the lactones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, That's with their their hit single Dragon Age Elixir, <laughs> their hit single L Taurine DL Phenylalanine. Yeah. <laughs> this band Man, sucked. Phenylalanine. That's that too. Even could go in the little chorus part. This this man this this weird press tchotchke was way more in depth. Also, than I, it's yeah, it's I mean, actually now his, mm. the band is actually press tchotchke and the glucolocalactones <laughs> <laughs> and acetyl L tyrosin. That one doesn't. No, nope. no, that was a B side. <laughs> yeah, no one remembers that. Didn't even chart. <laughs> so anyway, Dragon Age. That's our Dragon Age impressions. No, yeah. actually, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, uh, I, I initially, I, you know, going into this game, I don't know. I, you were ready to not like this game. I could well, tell. no, I, I actually, I was ready to like it. Like, I, uh-huh. I was trying to keep a very open mind. Sure, and sure. initially, I, I wasn't wild about it. Yeah. Um, for a number of different reasons that aren't really worth going into. Just little things that just, in, in the, you know, depending. I think really a lot depends on your, you know, whatever origin story you're playing as. Some That's are probably true. Some are definitely more interesting than others, but um. And also, if you're playing on normal, it can be incredibly difficult. But luckily, you can just switch it to easy, and uh, and uh, that that re- removes a lot of frustration. But that said, uh, you know, uh, I, I think there are a lot of interesting things going on uh, dialogue-wise. Yeah, um, I agree. With that. I, I feel like if there's anything about this game that uh, and I think is, is really interesting. What sort um, of the effort? What's the actual sort of dialogue system in this game? Uh, it's old school. Straight five up. options. Okay, because I know uh, that, that your character doesn't talk and they just respond. Cool. Yeah, the old Republic is Mass Effect style, isn't it? Um, the old Republic. No, the old Republic had still options. Has the I same. thought the old Republic used the wheel. Oh, the okay. old Republic. I'm thinking of Kotor. No, the new, oh, the, the new old, the new old Republic. Oh, sorry. The old Republic the new, new old shit. shit. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about the new, the new old shit. Yeah, though the, the old, the old Republic definitely does have the radio thing. Yeah, and I'm, no, not Knights of the Old Republic. Yes, oh, those guys. Those guys use the classic. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh. Re- yeah. The reason I, uh, they don't do it in this one, I guess, is because your guy doesn't talk. Your guy doesn't your talk, doesn't and talk. it's just the whole thing he says is whatever's written there. Yeah. Um, which, which Nick, I remember you didn't like. I, I, I did, it was kind of weird and disorienting for well, the first hour or so. But after, I don't. At this point, I don't even notice. Like, I don't notice it as much now either. What bothers me about it is that there are a lot of camera shots. On your character who's just standing there with his mouth closed and yeah, doing not, nothing, and but that's just, just when the other person's saying something. Not always, really? or or at least I don't well, know. Because you th- you say things instantaneously, so there's I mean I know it's just I don't know cutting <laughs> from the like thing, me just, pressing a button to just like <laughs> seeing just me there, just sort of standing there. For five seconds. It's just I don't know. There are just some weird, creepy moments where your guy looks like he's yeah, yeah when his like, eyes when I, uh, he's looking staring away, boring yeah. into and your then, soul. Right, yeah, he's looking at the character who's talking to him. Then his eyes just sort of roll over to look at the camera camera without the rest of his face yeah. moving yeah, well, yeah. i, I, I definitely that exacerbated there. that because my guy i didn't think oh, about right. it i made my care i made a bunch of characters when the character creator came you out added the lazy eye trait no my guy <laughs> is the opposite of that my guy is looking straight ahead but he's i made him an older character because i often like how older characters look and so he's got these like <laughs> yeah. dark kind of sunken eyes and he just looks like the most intense goddamn guy like he looks like someone you'd see in like a, a, a dream in a david lynch movie or something where he's just <laughs> motionless staring straight at you with these dark crazy intense eyes it's weird. It's kind of hilarious. It makes a lot of conversations funnier than they otherwise would be, which kind of makes the game uh, My guy's just kind of like a thin, wimpy douchebag. Yeah, you've got, sort of... you got a wizard, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, My guy's a dwarf rogue, so right. it's pretty stocky. Yeah. So, yeah, also, <laughs> I mean, outside of just... I mean, I guess we should talk about just yeah, what... we should talk about the video what, what What actually is interesting about this stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean... Yeah. Uh... You know, there are there are moments where uh, uh, cool things are going on. As far as uh, good, yes, it's pretty good. <laughs> Classic Nick. Get There's moments where cool things are going on. Comma, it's pretty good. Nick Brecken. <laughs> Bethesda Softworks. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Dot com. Uh, yeah, um, that uh, works. No, well, for me, it's it's. Yeah, why don't you talk about things and then I'll talk about things. Yeah, I mean, and I, then I'll sit here. Yeah. Okay. What you say about a lot of it being down to the dialogue, I think it's true. I mean, a lot of the dialogue is kind of is is 
sort of boilerplate fantasy stuff, but there are some yeah. there's some situations that I just I love, and it's the it's, it's the same stuff I love about same... whenever Bioware gets it right. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, I I start so they, I mean, months ago, I guess I I, I spoke about my experience starting off as the dwarven commoner, mm -hmm. and so when I when I started up this game. I played as the dwarf nobleman because I wanted to see what that same culture was like right. from the other side. And it, it's really cool. Ha I think this is going to be kind of game where you should probably play multiple origin stories. You don't have to beat the whole game each time to do it. But I yeah, think it's, it's worth checking out just some of the stories because you can get through them in a couple hours. And uh, just to see how, how they all go through. I'd like to see, I'd like to try playing just all of the origin stories back to back and yeah. seeing how that holds up as kind of a 12 hour like Dragon Age Origins. Yeah. Origins, the origins, origins. Yeah. Dragon yeah. Age Origins, the origins. Oh, sorry, this is Dragon Age Origins. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. you just <laughs> I, for, I forgot <laughs> you about invented that. the name of the game after Good job. It invented. It's it's Origins Origins, you're right, sorry. Yeah. But, origins squared. Yeah. yeah. That would be the modern marketing uh treatment. But I My but origin. so like Origins Origin realm. Systems. Yeah. <laughs> Dragon Age or, origin Origins Systems. By, <laughs> an, or e, an EA company. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, but it, playing as the nobleman was really interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's completely the opposite of playing the commoner. Whereas playing the commoner, everyone treats you like a complete asshole. Right. Has no does not give you the time of day except for your except for your little lackey who thinks you're the greatest guy ever and does runs that guy around have, like, talking a to you. Awesome. Hat? No, but he kind of <laughs> is that even body. He's sort of that type of character. I mean, he even looks like that basically. Yeah. And uh, but in you know in the as a nobleman, you've got your kind of second in command guy, and you can basically. The interaction you have with this guy is like this guy's annoying me. Kill him, you know. So I mean, you basically go around and you're you, you have essentially com complete immunity. And about half of the conversations, you can just decide kill this person. Mm -hmm. um, the the very first one of the very first things I did as this character was to go out into the uh, into the main market area, and there were two guys arguing. And so I went up to them, and there's a a scholar who's argu who's arguing with this uh, more intimidating dude. And the one dude's like, this guy wrote a, a book about, an historical book about my family, and it's completely slanderous, and I, I, this, I want this guy killed. This, he's done great dishonor to my family. And the scholar's like, well, look, it's just historically true, the things I wrote, this is what happened. And he explains this thing, and I wasn't really paying attention because I was chatting with Nick on Steam about Dragon Age, and <laughs> so I wasn't paying full attention to this, this dialogue thing. And so I had sort of had my character mirror what I was my attitude, which was, all right, fine, do whatever, because mm -hmm. I didn't feel like dealing with it because I was distracted. And then immediately the aggressor just stabs the other guy, and the guy dies. And I'm like, oh, well, fuck, Sh oh, God damn it!" which I really enjoyed off the bat because it's it was reflective of my character's lack of investment into that situation, for right. one thing. Um, but I didn't want to have that be my first thing I did, so I lamely <laughs> just loaded up a quick save. <laughs> and so, but it was cool because I went back and I played through this whole conversation and, you know, I go through and I basically have my character play the role of sticking up for the validity of history and, and historical integrity and so on. And I'm like, well, you know, he wrote these things. And uh, if this is historically accurate, what can you do? And so I'm like, go away, leave this guy alone. So the guy leaves and the scholar remains. And then this guy basically... After the situation is resolved peacefully and after having his life spared, immedia immediately he's just like, well, maybe that guy could be a problem dealt with before it gets to uh, too too much to deal with. What, and I'm the scholar? Like, yeah. And I'm just like, immediately you turn around and now you're the like murderous backstabbing <laughs> asshole. This is hilarious. And so I, I go through all that and I'm like, no, 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 I don't think so. I don't think that needs to be done. I think it's fine. And then my characters, like the, I mean, you know, obviously what I chose to say at the end, I go through all this. I'm trying, I'm being like the sort of paragon of, of kind of integrity and fairness and and uh, for and uh, forgiveness. And then, of course, my parting shot to this guy is, I'm sure you, you sure you'll remember this exchange when you write about my family. And it's just <laughs> like the whole thing. Every oh, that's layer, awesome though. That just yeah, makes you just be a rich douchebag. Exactly. No every layer of this conversation was just this amazing like doubling back hypocrisy of all these characters in this society where everybody is sort of outwardly trying to look very uh, honorable and, and benevolent. And then as soon as the other party turns their back, they're immediately trying to just stick the knife in. Like it's the whole, the whole dwarf nobleman thing is like that. Whereas the dwarf commoner, everyone's just a jerk, you know, right up at face value. Yeah. But, and, and it was really interesting playing these two characters and seeing the different treatment in them. And I'm just, I was kind of impressed because, not that you know, not that it's uh, 
get a, like the most revolutionary writing that's ever been written or anything. But you know, that level of characterization is relatively uncommon in video games, and it was fun to go through. And being able to have that impact and choose to have that conversation play out that way was amazing. I mean, that like was uh, that conversation could have gone a million different ways depending on which st- you know every step I take. You're diverging it a little more, yeah. and it really isn't. It isn't revolutionary writing what it is it's just an extra layer that they've added on every every yeah, single little exactly. situation and i'm the, the, the interactivity uh, of that sort of yeah, just inherently it really makes, yeah it makes you want to see the tree for that too exactly. like, yeah what, yeah right what's yeah. going on behind here just yeah. navigating right yeah. xml file or yeah. whatever that's yeah yeah but it's cool i mean i just think that stuff is so enjoyable i, I just really it ah, there are some good there are well some done. really good touches I, what i'm really enjoying are uh, just walking around with your party, following you, and just two characters will just strike up a conversation. So that while you're in your party, while, yeah. while you're going from point A to point B, they're just talking and there's just, just like ambient dialogue. They're, yeah, they're just filling the space, and it's all kind of uh, relevant stuff. Like, yeah, hey, you I mean, asshole, that's that kind you of did tried this, or... to do that, but it was totally localized. Yeah, just static loading screens. Yep, and it was kind of irregular. It wasn't as it wasn't as kind of integrated. As yeah, it was actually game. just as you're walking through empty spaces in the world. There's yeah, yeah, conversation just wherever it just happens, and it happens pretty frequently too it's not like triggered by some event right. usually it, it's cool. uh, um, your, your characters and will also say relevant stuff if you just talk to them mm-hmm. out of the blue they have stuff cashed up basically for yeah. all these different situations i mean and there are just there are a lot of surprising moments where i'll be talking to a character and uh i'll just say some bullshit thing and then the, the guy that i'm talking to will be like well who, you know who the hell are you or like you know just like he'll, he'll like question what the hell i'm about you know and and there's just it's it's a usually a very pointed question, and I'm I'm there are a couple moments where I was just taken aback, like oh uh, I don't know, like <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I better decide what my character's about. Uh, like I'm I, going through all the dialogue yeah, trees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it makes you think about, uh, and I mean, even even things like we were we were you know one of the things that I still think is kind of lame is the, is the romance system, but yeah, but with, kind of within out. that though, it there it does sort of. We, you know, if you're talking to just a random NPC and you have uh, this chick in your party who you're trying to woo or whatever, uh, courting, right? She'll say something like, "This is ridiculous. Why the hell are we doing this quest? Like, this is this is bullshit." And uh, if you have to pretty much pay attention to what she says, or she's <laughs> going to just you know completely stonewall you, right? Uh, and think you're you're big maybe jerk. not entirely unlike real life. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, you know, maybe uh, courting uh, revolves around you just telling them what they want to hear. Um, uh, that that is the mini game in this game. So I mean, it's bullshit, but it, it's kind of amusing. Wow, it, guys. What's well, up? no, I mean it is. <laughs> it's funny though because I was talking to a coworker who who got this game early a couple weeks ago. And he was playing through, and he had been talking to someone else who had been playing the game. And this other person was saying, oh, well, you know, it was weird. I really thought the romance stuff would come into play earlier. It took me like 20 hours before I had any of those situations pop up. And my friend was like, really? My priorities must be different. It took me like two. And so I, yeah. I'm really curious what each of those guys... I haven't actually... Well, I, I encountered in two yet, hours but, just because I was curious. That's, yeah. See, I, I was just like, you have the spring! Uh, the, the other guy was just sort of brushing off the girls' characters the entire time. I was like, I gotta do this quest. Just hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, forget uh, it. Gotta, I gotta... <laughs> right. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to that. And yeah. Just, yep. I mean, I, I guess on the, on the sort of gender note, there's uh, not related to the actual relationship system, but in addition to kind of the, the difference between playing the dwarf commoner and the dwarf nobleman going through the dwarf no well, actually going through both of them made me really want to check out either of those scenarios as a female character mm. because there's especially in the noble one there's so much emphasis placed on gender roles i mean so much of it is based on the fact that you're the middle brother in a line of male succession to the king like the the entire plot of it basically is revolves around that you you know you're accosted by by these female dwarf uh, I, I don't know what they are. I mean, I don't know if they're nobles or, or commoners or whatever, but, you know, they're trying to essentially get in bed with a noble, so, nobleman so that they can enhance their standing in society and marry one of them and then, get, you know, essentially yeah. marry up, that kind of thing. I mean, you, you, you get to the point where you go and you fight. You go and you can choose if you want a nobleman to fight in this uh, tournament thing. Uh, yeah. The proving, the proving, and yes. you know one of the one of the contestants is a female, <clears throat> and so my character took kind of the gender equality route in that conversation of just like, well, I'll fight whoever you know, or right. whoever wants to participate, and it, and it was funny because the 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 way that the guy who runs the tournament interprets that 
at the end, he's like, you sure showed her. Everyone here really wanted to see that woman put in her place. And it's just like, <laughs> what? Jesus, all right. Like, I, it's, you know, there's so much stuff in that in that whole sequence that was super dependent on your character being male. And I'm, I'm curious, like, the amount of divergence that mm. is apparent in this game, even just the, from playing like, just a few playing, paths like for a couple the, hours. The dwarf race may, yeah. in fact, have four completely different yeah. origin paths. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, it's it's a, it's extremely ambitious in that respect. I suspect that, I, I mean, I really think, just judging from the stuff that I played after those, you yeah. know, the 30-minute intro, it, I think... It sort of I folds think, back together after a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I mean, got it, to, though. It, I mean, it has to. It has to. But but I, it does make me sort of wish... Games. It does make me sort of wish that the, the full game... Yeah, and people are saying 50 hours. I don't think it's going to take 50 hours to complete this game, but it does make me wish that it was a little bit shorter so that, because I don't think there's a chance in hell I'm ever going to go back and play. If it was just, yeah. If it was, the idea was that you would kind of play through all the different campaigns yes. instead of. If it, because that's kind of what Dragon, Dragon Age Origins implies. It's like, you know, get to know the origins of these characters. Right, right. I don't think I'm, ever, I mean, just personally, and I'm a guy who will sink a lot of time into a game. I'll play through this game once. I might check out a couple other origin stories, but right. I'm not going to. It just it feels like work to me at a point where I have to. Oh man, what decision did I make here? How do I experience this other but thing? Like I have to remember the, what I was. You know, doesn't the structure you describe though basically mean you can just go and play the isolated origin stories and be confident that it's not going to be an entirely different game after that? That you have to play all through all over again. Well, yeah, I'm just saying. By the time I finish the one playthrough, uh-huh. the, the chance of me wanting to play through all those other sure. origin kind stories. Of your sort of- in the in the sort of state of playing the game, sort of past the stage where you just want yes. to go and discover the beginnings of the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've already experienced the end. Because it is yeah. in the course of the game, you do end up at the origin, you know, locations of right. of, of all the other right, races. Right, so right. you're sort of getting some of that content anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I right now, I am in the dwarven city, right. and I'm seeing a lot of the stuff that you're like the you know the dynamic yeah, that yeah, you're yeah. that you're describing. So I mean, you're not living st- it. I know, you're not living <laughs> it, Nick. You're seeing it from an outsider's eyes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have heard from multiple people that there is a pretty considerable amount of divergence in in the game. I mean, certainly more so than than Mass Effect or something like that. Yeah, um, there is definitely. I mean, the choices that you make as far as, as you know, uh, just quests that would seem kind of uh, like, you know things that aren't necessarily important or you know storyline quests. Th- those actually do come back to uh, haunt you or, or uh, yeah, reward you. Just the fact that you're back in the dwarf city right now, it, wherever you are, and sort of you're sort of worming your way through the story. I think if you were playing as a dwarf, you probably wouldn't be where you are right now. Well, would I, you? I think you you can. I think you can choose to go wherever you want to, but okay. it, obviously it would be like a completely different storyline at that point because you're a dwarf. You know, I mean, the yeah. situation would be would be different. Yeah, and, you'd and be clearly dealing with it, people you know. In fact, I'm really curious about that because the circumstances of how you leave yeah. the dwarf area as the dwarf noble think, are pretty extreme. I think like I think they're always extreme. Yeah. Um, you know, what was your what was your experience? I'm a, I'm a wizard. Uh, believe yeah, it or not, I've spoiled a lot of stuff, so and I probably shouldn't spoil like actual main. Yeah, like, but when you <laughs> leave the wizard town, uh, there's you're, a wizard town. You're not. You're not the. <laughs> you're, Hell yeah. You're not the favored wizard. Oh god, uh, that reminds me, wizard. Oh my god, I was. Um, <laughs> that reminds oh, me. Oh wizard. I mean, oh, I wizards. assume just because of of, yours is the first place you go after the after the starting area is like the Grey Warden camp thing, right? I assume is that true? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So. I, I assume this is everyone will see this, but there's an amazing moment where you can talk. You can go up to this dude <laughs> yeah. called a tranquil. He's he's got some kind of mind, um, some kind of uh, like lobotomy or something where yeah. he's where he's just completely passive and uh, speaks very slowly and enunciates very carefully. And you go talk to this guy and he be, "Hello, how are you doing?" And just because of the way the initial camera angle happens to be set up. Over his right shoulder, kind of with the little slightly blurred out depth of field, way in the background, there's a wizard doing an like unending practice of some ice spell or something, and he's just doing these like crazy casting motions with his arm, like nonstop, and he just looks like he's like in a fucking rave or something. So you've got as you've got this guy, he's like, well then. Oh, you just, like you've got the wizard. spastic wizard in the background, just like busting yeah. out, like busting some moves. It is fucking hilarious. I took some Fraps video of it, so I might I might put that up on Idle Videos on uh, on YouTube. I've had a couple of hilarious moments like that. Yeah, I think they must be intentional. Yeah, I mean, I mean, God, it was just hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't even believe it. And also, I had to play that part of the game like three fucking times because the quick 
load button, Nick, you described this exact problem, so I'm retarded. Uh, the quick load button is exactly the same as the Fraps yeah, I had that uh, video right capture too. problem. So I kept reloading my game, and I had to go... Oh, it's I, F9? It's F9, yep. yeah. And so <laughs> I went F9 and I changed the quick load to F8. But um, speaking of pressing buttons on a keyboard, this is get ready for the least surprising statement and recommendation ever, but the, the PC version of this game is pretty pretty fantastic. Mm. Um, it's it's so... Thumb says. I know, I know. Well, you know, I warned you. But uh, I'm... This, combined with Torchlight, has made me so relieved that there are still developers who can make something that feels incredibly native to the PC and really takes advantage of the input devices of the mouse and the keyboard. Um, the PC interface for Dragon Age is just absolutely fantastic. It uh, properly scales to resolution. Like It's got this amazing zoom in, zoom out from the tactical view to the kind of more mass effect mm, yeah. over the shoulder view. I'm which surprised is at how well great. that works. It is It looks so excellent. clean when you it when you really zoom does. out uh, to that tactical Like they, they just block out certain yeah. geometry that would get in the way from an up, up overhead view. And I mean, they must have just done a pass through the entire game. Yep. It just made sure that every roof is properly, you know, like destroyed. Text correctly? Yeah. yeah, that's cool. It's uh, it's fantastic. It just And it just looks cool. I, I think oh, I've mentioned other... in, in this cast before that I, I, for some reason, because I just like fiddling with things, I love when you can scroll in and out of stuff with mouse wheels and games. I just, I'm stupidly amused by that endlessly. It's like jumping. Uh, and so in a game like this where it actually has a meaningful gameplay effect, it's just even better because it means I can do it without purely just being a stupid OCD idiot. Yeah. The other thing that it, that, uh, it does, which is amazing, is there is a... A checkbox in the configuration utility to turn off the intro movies, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. which is amazing. Like, yeah. oh my god, how how is that not very nice. something that everybody does? So, how is actually just fighting dudes and attacking? Uh, that's a good guys? question. Yeah, I you know apparently mm, it's hard. You've it's had a hard. much harder experience than I have, I think. Possibly, although the mage is supposedly easiest. Oh really? To play as, I, and, it, and it, it was a lot easier. So you're I've had more battles where I've died more than once on a specific battle. You haven't? No. It, I don't know. Maybe I just suck. I, but, thought were, uh, I thought you were good at games and only liked games that were hard. For I'm hard pretty good people. at games. I am good at games, which is surprising because I there are like eight or uh, there are points where I will die like eight times in a row and just get incredibly frustrated in this game on easy mode. Uh, <laughs> so Sounds like you're the baby now. I guess the torch. I guess. Passed. I, I to be fair, I'm not. I'm not. You are voted <laughs> off this podcast. <laughs> um. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh. But uh, <laughs> I will say I've actually never, um, despite being a longtime PC gamer, I've actually rarely gotten into these kind of party-based sort of pseudo-tactical RPGs. Um, for whatever reason, it, it was one one segment that I, I very infrequently played, uh, including a lot of the older Bioware stuff. So, um, but it's been fun getting into this. I, I really love the the mer the sort of interactivity between the the two camera views. And I, it actually means I find myself using it all the time now because I can just—it's so nice to go mm -hmm. in and out of. Like you know, you go back into the over shoulder to run around with your guy and position him, and then you go back into tactical. That's what I do anyway. Then I go back into tactical, and I just—I deal with just setting just stuff up and queuing and stuff, up actions yeah. and stuff. There's also this whole tactics, automated tactics thing you can yeah. go into where it's like it's you know, kind of convoluted though. Yeah, I can imagine it's... some dudes getting really into it. It seems a little much for me. What you should do though. For all your characters, is add a condition that if they get under a certain health, just have them yeah, take yeah, a potion. Yeah. Actually, I think that's a default condition for uh, some of the for some easy of the mode things. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> Maybe it's it not. is. Yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's not. It wasn't on mine. I had to add it. But it's oh. what's annoying. What's annoying for me actually is is when I inhabit them. Uh, uh -huh. If yeah. my if my if my main guy dies or something, I have to add the health. Uh, potion to the bar every damn time because for whatever reason I mean there are like three different kinds of health potions and I have to because the bars are all specific to that character yeah well you just add it once for each dude and then it's there yeah the lesser potion and and then if you get a greater one it's oh, not there I and it's see. just yeah, it's okay. always yeah, I, yeah, I end yeah. up just adding like 15 different buttons <laughs> yeah. and I'm like oh shit yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not on there and then I died yeah anyway uh, by the way um, not that big of a deal but heavily bindable keys uh, please yes. everyone do this in your games. Uh, yeah, although unfortunately you can't bind keys beyond uh, the 10th Ten. key, yeah. which is a kind of shit. Which is way more than I need for my character, but I guess for a wizard. For, for a wizard, it's getting a bit much. I wish I could add a control one key. But yeah. uh, I don't know. The combat to me, you know, it's okay, but it's not. It's it's honestly the weakest part of the game. It yeah. seems like this um, game has a lot going on that you guys are into, though, which is cool. Because if it's you, there, if it you does, told us that from nine months ago, you would be surprised. I yeah, I, I'm still. It's a very still... large game in a lot of ways. I mean, I was thinking about the setting. 
I agree absolutely that it would be nice if it were less obvious and less kind of typical in a lot of ways. But I was thinking about it. I was thinking about kind of the difference between this and Mass Effect. And it is funny how, how one kind of thematically connects. You know, you've got – in a game like Mass Effect, it's essentially about a world that's very mechanized, very automated, very slick, and very very clean. And the game works along with that by not giving you that much to do on the low level. Um, you know, you basically can sort of generally tell your guys, go there or whatever, and they'll kind of operate uh, themselves. And uh, But for the most part, it's, it's very much an action-flavored RPG. You go over to Dragon Age, which is this, you know, this big Tolkien-esque, extraordinarily arcane, uh, detailed world. And then, of course, the game has all of these systems that you can choose to use or not to yeah. use. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, go into this or go into this view or that view. And all these hotkeys you can bind and assign and you can control any character if you want to and set up behaviors for them. It's just interesting how that works. I mean, it's, I, I, it's, it would certainly be more than possible to, to flip those associations around, but I, I think there's got to be something about that kind of setting that just, that just somehow thematically works with, with the, the style of the game. And I, I it's guess. probably not a coincidence that, well, it's just, you know, I, mean, I hate this fucking setting. Really? <laughs> no, no, no. All that much. I, um, I, uh, man, this game, mm. I, I really I do not like the way that it looks at all. Mm. Um, I, I the Lord of the Rings uh, aesthetic and the a lot of the characters um, just ugh, it's garbage. <laughs> I, it's 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 disappointing to me because I do like so many other things about it that if right. those things weren't the way that they are, I would yeah. be, man, this game is amazing. But as it is, it's like ah, god, another town looks just like the last town. It's all muddy. Yeah, and yeah, just, that, that's a fair it, point. Uh, that's a completely uh, fair point. Oh, a dwarf that has a Scottish accent. I've never heard <laughs> that before. Like, I just, I do like what they were, do what they are doing with you know. They obviously did make a a you know a very concerted attempt to uh, inject some you know uh, new ideas into the classic cliched fantasy shit you know the, yeah. the class dynamic and and all that kind of thing it, it, it does work on some level as as in, you know injecting some sort of flavor into yeah, this that's, that's what's into appealing this to me from all the stuff that you guys are talking about is that yeah. even though it's a sort of fantasy thing yeah it's nice that the actual sort of repercussions of that world existing might actually be part of well that's the game i mean i was well, one thing that i forget. more more so than like wow i mean yeah well know, certainly i mean I, it's certainly more interesting i think than the fictional wow which i've never cared about in the, uh, in the slightest, even though I like how that game looks. But, you know, I, I was John Walker um, of Rock, Paper, Shotgun and PC Gamer UK and, and stuff, he was talking about how, you know, you've got this religion in this game, which on its face is not really that different from just kind of the classic idea of here's this god and we pray to this god and, and this and that. Um, and they've got whatever kind of fantasy backstory that you always have in these games. But the he was saying that the world is so populated and so filled out to the point that you have the religious people, you have the people who are kind of have been, um, you know, disgruntled or disaffected by religion. And then on top of that, you have the religious apologists who are the people who go out of their way to to kind of be overly mm -hmm. effusive and yeah. about, defensive about this. Religion. And to the point where the religion itself might not be the most original concept, but it's more the idea of if this were in fact like the local religion of this culture or this society or whatever. Yeah, that's, these that's are what I these mean. are the classes that would arise out of that. And yeah. I, I think that to me is interesting enough that I, I'm less bothered than, than I was just by kind of the trailers and and on its face than I would be about about the setting is is that level of depth applied yeah, to it's, it, I suppose. It's not remotely the same, but it, it's kind of what I like about the Discworld books is that it, they, I mean, obviously this is a completely different direction than that tonally, but just sort of what if this world just sort of existed long enough for people to pay attention to all these details and stop just being amazed by the fact that they're inside a fantasy world? And that's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, but you still hate it. <laughs> it gets <laughs> no, to be I mean, a bit I much. See where coming from. I it mean, gets I, to be a bit much. The other thing I really don't like uh, is turning the corner and being inst instantly entered into a, into a, uh, into a yeah. that happens all the time in this yeah. game. And it, and, in fact, I agree, I agree with that. in fact, I would say generally the game is a bit more linear than I had hoped it would be. Mm -hmm. uh, even just going, having the freedom to, to choose what 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 areas you're going to, um, still feels like uh, if I didn't have that initial choice, yeah. it would be an incredibly linear game where I'm walking from 
down this path and here's a guy and I'm going to enter a conversation. And just there are a lot of moments where it's like, oh, I'm locked in a cutscene and I can't do anything. And yeah. It's very kind of Uncharted I, 2 in that way where it's just I hit the threshold where I'm talking to this guy now. I, think I wish I they, could just I think what they tried to do is put more of nonlinear nonlinearity at the lower level. Yeah. Which yeah. I think is not as much your interest just from t- I remember I was talking yeah. to you about about kind of what you like about RPGs and, and various games. And you, well, you, I do you like... You definitely fall more on the broader exploratory kind of side. I, yeah, I, which I, I think is a totally fair perspective. I to tend have. to do like, you know, RPGs do offer you the freedom to, to move around yeah, uh, yeah. And, 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 and that kind of thing. But I, I, I mean, I do appreciate the lower level stuff. I just, you know, when you, when you are locked into... Yeah, uh, I, mean, I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. For sure. So, but yeah, other than that, though. Also, um, this is kind of frivolous, I suppose, but it would be, if someone wants to start an internet petition about something, like if you've, you know, if you've kind of reached your, your tolerance for complaining about Left 4 Dead 2 or Modern Warfare 2 or whatever, if you're ready to kind of bring up some more pitchforks, I would appreciate if someone would start an internet petition to ban English people from acting <laughs> Yeah, games. God. Um, I love English people. Most of the other Idle Thumbs people who aren't us are English, and uh, I enjoy English accents a lot, like most Americans do, probably. But, oh my God, the particular brand of English person who exists yep. to fill 90% of roles in fantasy games. See, that's the kind of thing that in this game that needs to fucking stop. Like, that, that needs yeah. to end. I, I'm not kidding. Stop. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. Oh, my God. And it's they, they occasionally will get a dude in there. There's one guy who was like some kind of former Templar or something in the initial camp who's an English guy. And he just sounds like a dude. Yeah. He just sounds like a guy. And I'm totally mm-hmm. happy with his existence and his oh, yeah, performance. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. And he just, he's a little... Alistair, a, right? The, uh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. And he, he's a little snarky, but he's kind of supposed to be, and it's in a believable way. Yeah, no, way he's, he's I'm good. Like, I know a guy who sounds like this. Yeah, exactly. I, you're going to name who As opposed to the... Oh, I don't mean... I don't know. I, I don't know, know someone by name. But <laughs> 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 Merrick Bronstrain. <laughs> what? Um, I'm Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, just the the vast array of just less consequential vaguely high sort of pseudo queen's english like that that weird watered down shitty queen's english i just hate it's the worst it's awful yeah. i don't know what like, why casting directors hot, hot, have hot, such like, boners right sass, yeah sass yeah voice Ugh. yep like well it's, i i find it even worse they played with the, they played the douchebags in robin hood men in tights as well for some reason <laughs> <laughs> like, right yeah oh my god it's awful it's the worst yeah, yeah. that's that's the kind of thing about that that does it's it's, yeah. it's not so much that it, it it completely takes away the enjoyment of this game for me. It's just there are a lot of things that distract me from what I am interested right. in this I, game. I, I see it's where you're like, coming from. This town is kind of bullshit, and this character is kind of bullshit, and I wish I didn't have to enter into this. But oh, other yeah. than that, everything's great, you know? And it's just that occasionally happens where I'm just kind of pulled out of my uh, focus on, right. on these interesting dialogue dynamics and well, things. See, and, and it's this is why you get the PC version in a month when someone makes right. the patch right. that's just yeah, right. a mod that just gets rid of all yeah. this bullshit. Like, I, I'm, I am consistently amazed I would actually... the lengths people will go to with RPGs particularly. When you look at any Bioware game, when you look at Oblivion, Morrowind, when you look at any any of these kind of big ambitious RPGs, even stuff like Stalker, the Deus Ex, the lengths that the internet community will go to to sort of fix all the grievances people have yeah, on their amazing. own is incredible. Yeah. It's amazing. I would I would like to play a version of this game that um, just includes no dialogue or uh, spoken dialogue. Just turn off the dialogue completely. You that kind of you can, can do that it. technically, but the subtitles for whatever reason in you this don't game, want to see what anyone's saying at all. You don't even want to read it. No, no, I want to read it. What I'm saying is the subtitles are by default are oh, up, the top on the, the top of the screen, of the screen yeah, which yeah, yeah, I yeah. just can't deal with. Like, yeah, right. Uh, I would, I would, that would be completely annoying. So if somebody wants to mod the subtitles, uh, <laughs> the yeah. lower portion of the screen subtitle mod. Uh, yeah. That would be that would be good. We've got our, our requests here for the internet. Yeah, We're entitled assholes. This is the lazy web uh, <laughs> yes. section. Yeah. But yeah. uh, I'd never heard of Lazy Web until you started mentioning it all the time like a month ago. Oh, dude, Lazy Web. I know. Apparently, everyone heard about it a million years ago except me. What's Lazy Web? Do you not know of it either? That's That's See, because I totally didn't. Lazy never Web is when someone says, you know, someone should really make this. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm just going to post it out there on the internet. Is it not is a that website? The whole internet? No, lazy, lazy Web is just a thing. Oh, no one made a website for it I'm after sure, it became I'm, a thing? Someone should make a Lazy Website. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Nice. Cool. You guys want to do some reader mail? Should we maybe take a break? <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah, let's all right, let's take a break. All right. Taking a break. The last break. Video game. So we're back. <laughs> and we're going to read some reader mail. Yeah. 
Jake's excited. <laughs> All right, so Adam <laughs> says, hey, Chris, Nick, and video games. Hey. Uh, I've fallen way behind on podcasts. It wasn't until last night that I got to listen to the Dreamcast <laughs> and the Jeff Gone Goldblum episodes. I enjoyed them both very much. Went to bed and had a dream that, Don I, Goldblum. Yeah, that I was playing Blue Resident Game? Evil 5 <laughs> with Warhammer something something. For a while, it was like you described, with him describing, with him destroying bosses and zombies with his fr- refrigerator machine gun. But at some point, <laughs> something happened, and his giant gun disappeared. Oh. He turned to look at me for a second, and then darted off for the nearest high point where he could hang out and kick zombies off ladders. I followed him, and we did that for a while, k- picking off zombies when we could, until eventually he killed every zombie in the area. At which point, all the zombie corpses exploded into a shower of coins, and the word cool appeared on screen <laughs> in a cartoonish red font next to a picture of the face of Haihachi from Tekken. This happened a couple more times before we beat the level with different pictures I don't remember. When we started the next stage, his bullet chain ponytail was back. He took, took off around a corner and down a hallway, and before I could follow, I got kicked from the server for, quote, lollygagging. And that's my story. <laughs> wow, like I had a meme dream. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for filling the GFW radio shape hole in my heart with a great podcast, guys. Keep up the good work. Okay. Adam. Oh, no. All right. Uh, let's see. That's here. the best dream. Sorry. Yeah, that was a good one. Some guy had a dream that he was playing Resident Evil 5 with a guy who he saw in a YouTube video that we talked about. Yeah. We, yeah. It was an amazing dream. That's great. Yeah. And then the word cool explodes yep. out of coins. <laughs> Why are my dreams like that? Matt writes... You don't play thumbs. video games. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, since this cast is ending soon, I guess I may as well send this. After listening to the Dreamcast, I had a video game-related dream. No, not about Jake. Anyway, I was walking around at my own elementary <laughs> school. No, skip it. <laughs> my, I was walking around at my old elementary school's playground when suddenly I saw none other than Nguy Kroll. <laughs> I approached him and said, hey, are you Nguy Kroll? And, but then suddenly as I was saying this, I realized he wasn't Nguy Kroll at all. He responded, no. And then sort of shape shifted into some other dude who didn't look like that guy crawl at all. Embarrassed, I said, "Oh, sorry, you have the same hair." <laughs> but still wasn't true at all because at that point he had hair reminiscent of the Oompa Loompas hair and Willy Wonka. Keep casting those pods, Matt. So that's sweet dream. That's a pretty good dream. That actually happened to me. <laughs> um, Lenny Alanis. Okay, this isn't a this isn't a, a dream. He says, "I thought it's it was real." Oh my god, this is real life. I thought it was interesting when Max Schaefer revealed that Diablo 2's cutscene narrative wasn't necessarily a carefully designed and calculated decision, instead more of a miscommunication between branches of Blizzard. That is to say, it wasn't, hey guys, we don't want it to, okay, blah blah blah. It was more, hey guys, Blizzard sent us the random cutscene, uh, now what? Just keep making a game, I guess. What do you guys think about that? Still the best narrative device ever, by accident? Lenny Alanis. I think it is. I think stuff like that is cool. I think yeah. It's like Apocalypse Now or something, well, you know? Yeah. Like, Coppola had no exactly idea right. what he was getting into with that film, but it doesn't yeah. detract from the, the final product. That's how they made penicillin. That's true. That's yeah. totally true. It maybe it doesn't actually count as good medicine, though. Uh, I mean, it wasn't necessarily the guy's intent. That's true. But no, it's a good question. I actually really like that question a lot, because um, I obviously had the same thought at that moment as he was saying it. Yeah. Um, but no, I thought about it, and I, I think it's still equally awesome. Possibly more awesome. Yeah, that actually. just kind of emerged out of the weird yeah. development process they had going with the separate studios. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Nothing wrong with a happy accident. Exactly. Also, uh, a lot of people, I think, didn't pick up on this. Most of the stuff going on at the, in the like post-ending section of the Max Schaefer podcast, a lot of that was actually Eric Schaefer. Um, he mm. sounds a little different. He's a little gruffer. Um, that was that he was sitting on the couch the whole time when we were doing the Max Schaefer cast. And then um, at the end, he kind of got up and started saying saying stuff. A lot of the... A lot of the uh, that story about the accidental creation of that narrative device was was Eric Schaefer. I didn't realize that made it in. Yeah, there's actually cool. a whole... It was really interesting, I thought. It, I yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. expect it to come through because we weren't talking into the mics, but it yeah. was, it's actually pretty... Uh, yeah, that was good stuff. Maybe wish that I just had not been on that episode so that Eric could be sitting <laughs> in my seat. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, Eric Leslie, and this is another response to the Torchlight thing, he writes, oh man, he includes... Eric from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's like we're a newspaper or something. Uh, he says, hey, Thumbs. It's like- I know you guys have talked about Torchlight more or less to death, but uh, it's kind of doing Pretty a disservice much. not to talk about the awesome guy who wrote its predecessor, so I will a bit. Um, I feel like the timeline proposed by pretty much everyone in the gaming media is that Max Schaefer and company made Diablo, went away for a while, now they're back with Torchlight. Whereas, in fact, in 2005, Travis Baldry made a game called Fate for Wild Tangent, which was basically Torchlight yeah. 0.5, um, which included a lot of the revisions everyone likes so much, and he kind of goes through for a while. 
He talks about how they met the Shavers of Flagship Studios, worked on the ill-fated Mythos. Uh, then after Hellgate went under, they they uh, resurrected the team basically for Runic Games to make Torchlight, which is all totally true. Yep. We probably should have. I mean, we're all aware of that. Did we not mention Travis? I he he his name was mentioned during the interview for sure. I brought it up at one point. Okay, but I think the main reason we probably haven't talked about him as much is just because we had Max. Schiff yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Um, but no, but it's you, I mean it's Eric, probably true right. that he is being overlooked. I think that yeah, he, I mean, probably the the reputation of the Shavers probably has yeah maybe weighed a bit too heavily in in coverage. But it's definitely true that that Travis is the lead designer of yeah. Torchlight and is the I guess almost sole creator of Fate. I mean he was you know pretty much the entire design force behind that game. Um, I will say though, I did play I did play Mythos, um, and I just I didn't get into it. There's something about Torchlight that I think is far better mm. the feel or something i don't i don't know entirely what it is i think it's just the combination of the the visual design the the feel the interface just everything feels much tighter to me and i really like it a lot more but yes travis is undeniably a huge 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 part of this game and should be credited as such um let's see max actually talked about that guy quite a lot you know, yeah he did now that i'm thinking about it yeah. yeah that's good that's good to know take that <laughs> reader uh, Arandi Hoop or something <laughs> writes uh, a Far Cry 2 email I've only recently started listening to your cast and having bought Hitman Blood Money on Scoop's recommendations and loved it I bought Far Cry 2 and the accolades I heard it receive here the magnificence of the game hit me as I stood with a gun at an NPC's head having just banged, barged through his villas defensives with a burning car and intimidated him with false uh, radio information when I started wondering whether or not he would radio that I was coming if I left him alive, I stood for about a minute weighing that option and, and grappling with the fact that I was treating the AI as a human. Long story short, pulled the trigger. Far Cry 2 is awesome. Thanks for the great work. Insert wizard, bird noise, and humorous picture here. Yeah, I totally had that same experience the first time yep. I came across a target in that game. Yep. I was actually kind of stressed out about it. <laughs> I was like, oh man, he's pleading for his life and maybe he won't tell anyone. Yeah. Maybe I don't have to kill him. Why do I care? I don't know. I kind of do. That goes away after you've done it a few times, but it, it was a pretty amazing moment. Yeah. It's weird, actually, uh, how much more detached I feel in a game like Dragon Age, where I have now killed yeah, you like, murdered several children, children. Like, left and right. Yep. If you're someone who, who was weird. bummed out that Fallout 3 didn't let you kill kids... Yeah, you can I do guess, it. You can <laughs> do it. It's just the game for you. My guy is the bane of mothers, uh, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Did you somehow coerce a parent into killing her child? Yeah, it took me about five seconds. <laughs> I have, like, maximum coercion. And she was like, you know, uh, can't you do something to help my child? And the first option was, maybe you shouldn't help your child. Maybe you should just kill it. And uh, <laughs> she's like, oh, okay. And she walked inside her house, and that was it. What? <laughs> Whoa! Before, yes. like, in the scene before that, like, like 20 minutes before that, I uh, slit some kid's throat. You know, I normally don't do things like that in games, but I just wanted to see how far this goes. <laughs> right. It goes pretty far, It goes pretty far. Yeah. All right, so um, let's see. James Classic Fork Seabock writes, uh, Hey, Thumbs, it's really sad you're closing shop, etc. Um, congrats, Nick, and thanks, etc. Uh, on with one of the best dreamcasts ever. It's not actually mine, it's my wife's, but I, I was present for this crazy dream. Um, she was addicted to playing Yoshi's Touch and Go on her DS, which is why she had it. She, one morning around 4 a.m., I was having trouble sleeping. I was lying in bed staring at the ceiling. When suddenly my wife made this sudden movement and launched her pillow straight at our dresser. It slammed into the wall and skidded across the dresser, knocking makeup and whatnot all over the floor. I blink, wondering what the hell just happened. Then in a sleepy voice, my wife mutters, That's what Yoshis do with eggs. <laughs> <laughs> she rolled back over, still fast asleep. I whispered her name a few times, but nothing. I eventually fell asleep, leaving the mess as evidence to her sleep throwing. The next morning, she woke up wondering what happened, and when I told her, she just grinned. Um, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that is what Yoshi's do with yeah. um, He's got a second component to his email here, which is cool. Um, he says, Rima, you should talk about more about Star Control 2 before you close up. Which I'm not going to do. I'm going to let this guy talk about it because he's got a great story. So he continues, Jesus, that game gave me one of the most dread-inducing, terrifying moments in all my gaming years. When the Korra and the Urquan finish their civil war, they get, in, they, they get into near the end. I don't remember who won, but their sphere of influence then begins moving towards Earth. I literally started freaking out. I saved my game and stopped playing for days. I was 10 or 11 at the time, and I would pace around trying to think of what to do. I loaded it up finally and steered my small fleet right at their oncoming armada. Once I hit their first group and the pre-battle screen popped up with about 50 of their hardest ships to beat in the game to my 15 or so, I immediately shat myself and turned off my computer. <laughs> Eventually, after summoning up my courage, I turned the game back on and reloaded a previous state and attacked them during the Civil War like my friend told me I should have done. God, what a great game. 
Primo, you need to play uh, play Ultimate Seven, the Black Gate. Seriously, you're missing out on hours of mischievousness. Um, thanks again, guys. You're the greatest. Don't forget to don't fade into obscurity, uh, etc. The loneliest thumb, James Classic Fork Seabock. I love that Star Control story a lot. I read that before we recorded this podcast, and I think it's amazing. I'm trying I'm trying to just put myself in that position, and that's one of the awesomest stories I've ever heard about yep. playing a video game. Just, ah, just aliens. <laughs> see this like <laughs> yeah, this crazy like sort of cultural sphere just expand towards Earth. Right. And you just like the idea that he was so invested in the game that like, you know, age ten or eleven, that that like the idea that he wouldn't be able to save Earth from this, yeah. this sort of uh, unstoppable alien force, I think that's just incredible. Um and then the idea of just turning the computer off instantly. I don't know. <laughs> right, I'm pretty sure I've done that at least <laughs> once in my life. Of like just especially being so older, older suddenly, PCs that may yeah, exactly. have a big switch right. on the front. Yeah. Best. But you didn't have to hold it down for ten seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. That's a fantastic story. I really enjoyed that a lot. Um Alan Taylor, good day to you, Idle Thumbs. Good day. I noticed the other day that Idle Thumbs doesn't have a Wikipedia page, but then I thought to myself, you needed an entire wiki devoted to the thumbs. I've rectified this problem by setting up idlethumbs.wikia.com. Unfortunately, I have no time to spend actually adding content, and I lack the necessary wiki skills to actually make it good. I'm asking for loyal listeners to come help build this into a mighty wiki site to honor the name of Idle Thumbs. Good luck to you guys doing whatever you're doing now, and I hope the podcast comes back sometime. Uh, one last question. Why, after all the talking about it, did you never do a Far Cry 2 song? So long and fairly well, loyal listener Alan. That's a good question. Yeah, why didn't you? I don't know. Never, you know Maybe never, we're going to hear one right now when you edit it in. Don't, don't, don't oh. do this to people. I know there wasn't, there wasn't one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny, actually. Never, it never ever occurred to me for some strange reason. Um, but yeah. You and Steve did post that Tranquilizer Dart video to YouTube, though. Oh, yeah, we did. We never put that. We never linked that. I don't think we did it. Was that even... It was really early. Had we even started Idle Thumbs at the time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It may not be on Idle Videos, though. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's either on mine or Steve's account. I think it might be Steve's. Um, well, that's all we have for now. Hmm. We'll be back with the second portion of this episode. Yep. Which to you will sound like we're just taking a break right now. Actually, we're going to sleep and then going to work and then coming off from work and then coming over to my apartment and recording a podcast. Podcast. Well, I'm not working. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You can play more Dragon I'm going to play games. I actually want to play the... Before we record again, I want to play that Shattered game. Sh- the sh- oh, the Shattered... You know what I'm talking about? The one by Future Mark. It's the... Oh, right. Like, Space space game. Yeah. Space Shattered. S- that Space, space game. Space Shattered. Space that shattered. shattered Space game. Shattered. You know what I'm talking about? Sh- uh, the Shattered. Shattered. Just say yes or no. Horizons? Yes. Yes. Okay, you do. You're not just jerking me around, you son of a bitch. Actually, that was sort of a half guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shattered Horizons. Just Rising. sounded right. No, I really want to play that. It looks really crazy. So maybe by tomorrow I'll have some impressions. Maybe by 10 seconds from now I'll yeah. have some impressions. Video game. We're back from our break. Did that work? Are we back? Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey! Hey there. Oh. That break lasted an entire day for us. Yep. <laughs> but for you, it was instantaneous. Mere seconds. It's like time travel. Probably the time it took for me to sing video games. Oh, yeah. For like a half a second. Yep. So, we're back. <laughs> Before you guys got here, as you saw when you were coming in, I was playing Torchlight. Were you, oh, you played Torchlight? You like that? Surprise. Oh, really? You were playing that game? Yeah. Oh, man. I heard good, good things about that one. It's fun. I don't actually want to play any of the games ever. Yeah, like I'm, I'm enjoying Dragon Age, but uh, I am enjoying nothing as much as Torchlight. <laughs> like it's horrible; it's a disease. Right. But the thing I want your to tactics s- meter says uh, uh, Torchlight greater than uh, Dragon Age, and then you just it, it's just greater to, than Star. Yeah. It's like greater yeah. than Asterisk. It's like yeah, why do much. I? It's horrible. It's not even the actual best game. It's just I can't stop playing it. Yeah, like, I don't want to stop playing it. I just want to keep doing that. Uh, but anyway, what happened was, in addition to being, like, the problem with Torchlight is I'm addicted, right? I mean, so I'm addicted to sort of the macrocosm, the whole Torchlight package. But within that, I have all these other <laughs> individual addictions, right? I mean, that's why that game is so successful. Right. Like, I want to keep leveling my character. I want to keep maxing all these skills. I mean, the, you know, I've been playing so long that the, num- the number of skills I have at, maxed out at 10 is amazingly high. And then I want to... I, I'm horribly addicted to leveling up gems, which is hilarious because I haven't socketed a single gem in any item 
across yeah, you're, you're probably pretty 40 or 50 hours of gameplay. You're point. always afraid to spend points <laughs> or do anything in this game. <laughs> I know, exactly. So you're you're addicted just, to collecting things, just, but not using so them. So that when I have it, like, the highest possible level, yeah. then I can worry that it's too good for any of the equipment I have. <laughs> and then I still won't use it. But so what? You eventually get to a point where you have all this amazing stuff, you use it, and then you're probably done with the game, right? Like, that's it? No, I never really finished. That's the funny thing. Like, with Diablo mm. 2, I had the same thing with gems, and I don't think I really ever used any of them. It's just there. It's this horrible other addictive system. So you're the mythological dragon just like hoarding piles of shit. <laughs> yes, <in> like- <laughs> exactly. Yes. That's exactly what I am. Like that's it, – it's a good thing that this isn't the MMO version mm. so that my shame is, is – right is well, localized coming. to my own computer. Yeah, that's I coming. know. The, I'm going to be ruined shame when will be the spread. MMO of this game comes <laughs> out. In the MMO version, you might actually eventually be encouraged to play them just because your character Yeah, I know, because my character enough. will actually need mm, shit to right. play. Yeah. Um, but Or you'll, someone will just be like, what the heck? Oh, no, I don't, I don't need that. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just... Uh, I don't need that. I've got all that stuff. Right. Uh, <laughs> sure you do. Sure you yeah. do. <laughs> but I... Um, <laughs> in ad- so in addition to all those systems that I'm, that I'm addicted to, the other one is enchanting my guns. Yeah. I'm um, playing this this character. <laughs> my, my guns. Enchanted I, uh, my guns. <laughs> my first character was the alchemist and I realized how fun it was to to get a pistol and just keep leveling it up forever. Um, now, So now I'm playing the Vanquisher which is the actual ranged class which yeah. is has all the skills that actually pertain to ranged weapons. Right. And so it's even more imperative that I, that I level up these stupid guns all the time with the enchanter in town. And uh, Nick, you would, you actually had originally told me you were the one who first told me it's possible to enchant broke weapon the news, yeah. and have it completely the destroy every, everything you've worked for with, with yeah. hundreds of thousands of gold and and dozens and dozens of enchant uh, enchants in town. And when you told me that, it was the most terrifying moment ever because <laughs> I had been just recklessly yeah. abandoning the same... Like, How do you think I gun. felt? Well, I, I didn't just... discover that on a forum. <laughs> <laughs> I had to learn that the hard way. You thought there was a bug. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my shit's huh? gone. What? <laughs> Um, yeah, every what time, is this? basically, you you go down and you pay a wizard to enchant your any item that you have, and it, it'll randomly assign just a new attribute to it. So maybe right. it'll increase the damage, it'll give it freezing damage, it'll give it health steal or mana steal or whatever, a faster rate of fire. Um, it's an upgrade. And sometimes it doesn't, doesn't work, sometimes you spend the money and just nothing happens, but every once in a while... So this is a gambling like, thing. Is, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Every once in a while... It'll it'll strip every single magical property of the item and just take it back down to zero. So it's so, a crappy wizard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very rare that that happens, but it's possible. And so I'd been enchanting this this gun forever, and Nick broke this news to me, and I freaked out. It felt like I'd been like playing Russian roulette, and yeah. then learned like, that I had. Oh, that's that what I Russian roulette actually, actually known. is. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. It's I thought, like, oh, this gun's not loaded. I was just kind of fired in my head a bunch of times. Oh, 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 shit. Uh, <laughs> and but anyway, so I um. But I, I've been still – it actually – after you told me that, I went about three or four days and didn't enchant anything at all Frozen because I was fear, so yeah. yep. petrified. It was like the guy who wrote in about Star Control in the first half of the podcast where he like didn't want to turn his computer on because he was so terrified of what might happen as the Urquan approached Earth. That was like what it was, what it was like for me, um, Nick, after you told me about this horrible property of this game. Yeah. And uh, – but about 10 minutes before you guys got here today – I had I I had gotten back into the enchanting swing. Oh, here and, we go. Yep, I had leveled up this gun to levels that make my previously what are you enchanted to? gun seem just ludicrous. I don't know. I was getting ten thousand, doing ten thousand points of damage per shot. <laughs> I mean, it, like I was stealing several hundred health points per shot. Um, this was without any unique gems or anything in it. It yeah. was purely based on enchanting the... <laughs> because you don't want to waste those gems. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I should have because I could have gotten it back. Because um, what happened was uh, I enchanted it and it said, whoops, the wizard accidentally stripped your... Oh, shit. All its properties. Oh, no. It's reduced to a 150 DPS <laughs> oh, non-magical pistol. Oh, man. Uh, that doesn't do jack shit. <laughs> and I wanted to cry. Oh, wow. I had to compose myself gotcha. before you guys got here. Yeah. And I didn't tell you because I wanted to save it for the podcast. Right. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's oh pretty my hilarious. God, it's heartbreaking. I mean, I'm, that, that's, I'm sorry for you. I know. I thank you. <laughs> I, I had actually, I had sort of started taking out a bit of an insurance policy. Yeah. Um, this, was my second, this was my second gun. My original gun, the one that I stopped enchanting when you told me that and freaked out. I still have that one and it's still fine. So yesterday or the day before, I started kind of upgrading that one in parallel to yeah, this. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah. It's still only at about... I don't know, 
the power of my old one was, but I, I'm sort of starting up again, and now I'm going to find back some on other that gun wagon. and start yeah. doing a moth in parallel. So I've, but it's, it, you know, it's idiotic about it. This is exactly the same as the gem situation, where I'm basically setting myself up for an infinite Right, you'll, just, you'll now just have this armory just keep... of amazingly injected, yeah. like, back right. catalog well, then, that you, you know, won't touch. I'll have these two that are going I, up in yeah. parallel. One of them will eventually break again. Then I'll introduce a new one to replace it. Well, and see, I'll keep going until one of those eventually breaks. And my recent and mistake is I'm, I'm now doing this with all of the armor pieces. So well, I, I have, I have yeah. like, alternate, like, greaves. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, this is, it's just, like, it's becoming too complicated. I'm, I'm like, yeah. okay, now, so what, or, like... Oh, now now it's time to do my belt, and then the next time I'll do my my. I'm like, oh, how the hell do you keep track of this shit? Well, the one advantage of that is that at least your cost doesn't go up by too much each time. Yeah, that's true. You know, because yeah, because yeah, yeah. every time you enchant, it like gets a, more expensive. Yeah. Your dude is going to the... be pretty extreme after a while, though, if you keep doing this. Yeah, although I suppose statistically extreme. he will be horrible every now and then. <laughs> 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 yeah. So. Yeah. I, and, uh, it's, I love all the, the, the hilarious shit they call these things. You know, it's the same as, as oh, yeah, Diablo, yeah. where it's like, this one's a falchion, this one's a scimitar. This yep. one's a, yeah, they're all fucking swords. It's the same graphic. Like, what? <laughs> really? Uh, I, I learned a lot of names of weird medieval weaponry from Diablo. Yeah. And this but you game. don't know what they look like. <laughs> they're all, they all look the same, as far as I'm, I'm aware. Um, so that happened to me in Torchlight. Yeah. I wanted to share that with everyone, because it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's a tragedy. It's amazing how uh, how much that game is just sort of warps into that uh, gambling. Oh yeah, thing. Well, and I, I was mean, telling I was telling Jake before you got here. I mean, this game is even more of a loot game. Yeah, than the I mean, is. the whole game is is there now to support the gambling addiction. Yeah, which is kind of hilarious because it is an addiction like right. above that. Yeah. Like, like, well, and they, you know, it's funny. This always happens with these games. This is the same thing as the um, as the uh, kind of the Stones of Jordan. Not as extreme as that uh, at all, but. Along a similar path, this game does have an actual real guy who's the gambling guy. Who, yeah. You know, you could pay money yeah. to and get a random item. That The sort of risk-reward and potential terror of that guy is so insignificant <laughs> compared to the compared to the more like emergent terror of the the sometimes shitty wizard. Yeah. You know, like he's not he's not marketed as any kind of gambling thing. He's just a service that sometimes goes wrong. But that is so much more effectively terrifying and rewarding than the actual gambling guy that I never, ever actually go gamble. Yeah. I mean, who, what's the point? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're dealing with... When the, you got that shitty wizard, who needs yeah. the gambling? <laughs> it's true. You know, I mean, like the, the potential for incredible power or complete ruination is so much more extreme with the shitty wizard that, you know... Yeah, stay with that shitty wizard. Yeah. It's the exact same reason someone goes to a casino. I mean, like, it's, you know, you win and it's, like, amazing. And then you lose. But this casino has a shitty wizard outside. Out and then you keep yeah. doing it forever. It's so just, casinos it's, are the shitty wizards of real <laughs> life? Yeah. They kind yeah. of are. It's not a bad characterization. Mm. Um, so, Torchlight. God, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I should probably play other stuff. I should get back to Dragon Age. Yeah, I the should. game's kicking my ass. Oh, is it? Did you play more today? Uh, I played more last night. Uh-huh. God, I've died like I. I, I mean, it still, levels up with you. Normal or easy? I'm, I'm on easy. I'm playing on easy. I'm playing on the easiest. I never do this with games. Yeah. I'm playing on the easiest possible difficulty level. It's demolishing me. It's yeah. insane. Like within a, within like a segment where there are maybe four or five fights, I will die on the first one. I'll yeah. die on the first one again. I'll die. Then I get past that. Then I get to the second like, can one. You quick save. I'll die on that one. Yeah. So yeah, I'm now quick saving after every single goddamn thing, and I'm still like it took me like. Two hours just to get through what probably should have taken ten minutes last night. <laughs> what's, I mean, what's it's wrong awful. with your game. What have you? Done? I don't what's know. Wrong with you, I apparently I you know. I can't now play people games. are gonna be like, "Ugh, I'm glad they stopped doing this podcast." Cause that, <laughs> that game took that took me like two minutes. And I, you'll, there are probably a lot of people who, yeah, think I'm insane. But I think that I have, you, to, I have you, talked to some people though who are saying, "Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's too hard." And, I've heard and the just wizard is the easiest. Weird. It is. <laughs> it is the easiest, and it was easy. At a, at a point, but there are, I think, areas that are yeah. just simply more. You pass your... through the gate, <laughs> what? The, the wizard gate, where it becomes oh yeah a terrible. Yeah. Like, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, you are the shitty wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just give up fighting and uh, go stand Have in a town somewhere and just like, yeah. <laughs> that's why, the, that's why that guy's pain. there. Yeah, right. He exactly. Couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't save the right. He, he couldn't, couldn't get save the, dungeon, the world so of just... Ferelden or whatever it's called. So he <laughs> he sort of gave up. It's like the yeah. you know he's like the the guy who doesn't make it as a musician and he goes to teach elementary school kids how to play the recorder. Right. Exactly. You know, like yeah. <laughs> that guy just hangs out in this shitty small town and mm -hmm. 
puts things on people's weapons and he just occasionally hopes that nobody asks up, like, and then he gets asked get for stories or anything by some <laughs> punk little sharpshooter who's 30 yeah. years younger than he is and <laughs> you know complains and <laughs> demands their money back yeah and he just says i'm too old for this shit <laughs> t wizard t wizard s wizard <laughs> We call him the S wizard when kids are around. (laughs) (laughs) Also, like when your parents used to spell out profanity. I don't know if you ever did that. The Mm, swizzard. The swizzard? Yes. (laughs) Anyway. Uh, Those games. (laughs) Zenik. So, swizzard. So, yeah. So, Nick Swizzard Brecken. Is there a question? To, oh, I to wanted to know. I wanted to know if you felt like sharing a story with us about. Oh yeah. About oh right. Steam. Yeah, I did have this crazy thing happen. Nick to me. started telling us a story yesterday, and, and then we said, yeah, "Shut to up!" Not up on the podcast. Well, this yeah. guy on Steam had been bothering me for weeks. Uh, <laughs> what do you? What which, does that which mean? This guy happens. on Steam had been bothering. Well, that occasionally happens. You have well, you know, sometimes consistently you... bothering you for weeks on a regular basis. <laughs> does that really actually happen? Sometimes, yeah. Just all right. Just want to get a hold of you, and you know, like. You, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, this, this guy, guy on Steam, he keeps pestering me and making yeah. me come over to his house. His name is Remix or speaking to what a the microphone. Hell is that? Yeah, what the weird? Uh, I gotta get out of here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's happening right uh, now. <laughs> um, no, this guy was French. I had to take a job all the way across the country to make it start. <laughs> uh, no, this guy, uh, I can't pronounce his name. But uh, that's probably a good thing. Wizard. Nobody should contact this guy because he'll, he'll just become a bane uh, of their existence. But so yeah, uh, eventually I just I, I had to respond to him because I just had to figure out who's yeah. maybe maybe he was you know somebody I knew from France a from uh, yeah from from <laughs> France <laughs> yeah. So uh, he, he asked me if I worked for Valve and uh, I like that that's his opening. Question. Yeah, he says you work for Valve and I said no. And he goes, you have 571 games. And this, I guess we should explain. This is like a, the Valve press pass thing. So it looks like I have a lot of games. And so I told him I have a lot of money. And then he says, <laughs> <laughs> and he says, okay, Lucky. Me, I'm French. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was well, that was you much. may have a lot of money. <laughs> I, me, on the other hand, I'm French. I'm French. <laughs> uh, you have win at a lottery? <laughs> I just this is just it was the most surreal conversation. So I just eventually I told him I work for the government, and because uh, he asked me if for Left 4 Dead 2, he's like I'd be very happy, and I was like, Are you attempting to bribe a ranking official in the United States government? And oh my he's, god! He said, No, I'm French. I just asked to your kindness, and uh, what this was went he on. trying to ask you? I don't even understand what he wanted. Left 4 Dead 2. I I, I don't know how I'm supposed to him? just like transfer that from my oh, list I to see. his okay. list. Okay. Okay. Uh, and he's like, because he I've been you? waiting so long for Left 4 Dead 2. And I said, you'll be waiting a lot longer in a federal prison. <laughs> <laughs> what? And then I rattled off, like, Code 23, the International Extradition Treaty. And uh, <laughs> just, like... <laughs> you were going to extradite him to the United States? Yeah, yeah. French citizen? For, yeah, for soliciting a, a, a federal employee. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I suggest you terminate your line of questioning immediately. He said, okay, okay. I not at all understand what you say, but I understand the important. And then, <laughs> then that was it. So. Jesus, what? you're a cruel man. <laughs> yeah, you ruined that guy's life. Was it Icebox or something? Yeah, probably. <laughs> man, what a weird experience. Yeah, it was pretty surreal. So that's that. Sorry to that guy if he's listening. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the Black Vans. I don't think he's an Idle Thumbs anymore. listener. Yeah. If love, he was an Idle um, Thumbs listener, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> so if he actually is, if you're listening, French guy, uh, just tell me on Steam. Actually, don't do that. I don't want to talk to him anymore. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brutal. Because you're a U.S. government uh, yeah. agent. Yeah. yeah. We don't we do not do that kind of thing. <laughs> talk to people on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're making me break my code of honor. <laughs> yeah. Never so, share um, your password with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you guys see the chat log from the guy who uh, who had – there was someone who tried to – pull a kind of real-time phishing scheme with someone on Steam. and he's oh, like, An RTFS? Sure. He was PS, like, yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a Valve employee. I need your password and and uh, whatever, you know, this your account's being been targeted. I need I need your information to uh, to fix it. And the guy responded with, wow, you just made a big mistake, buddy. I am an employee of Valve. <laughs> and uh, you better give <laughs> me your account this, information yeah. right now or you're gonna, I'm going to ban your entire account. And, you'll be, and the guy's like, oh, no, don't ban me. I'm sorry. Here's my information. So the guy <laughs> surrenders all of his account information 
and the guy just turns around and steals all his shit. <laughs> what? And the guy he actually stole it. Yeah. Oh wow. And then the guy, this was on. They were that. they were um, speaking on MSN, not Steam. Mm. And so then the guy, five minutes later, he comes back on MSN. He's like, "What? I can't get into Counter Strike." And the guy's like, "Yeah, I just stole your account, asshole." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was an amazing turn of events. That's uh, pretty good. Yeah. That's really good. Yep. yep. And then the guy started pleading, and you know, yeah, yeah, it was pretty great. And a robe and wizard hat was donned. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of Steam, I, I got the uh, what is that? Shattered Horizons, the game that I was trying to think. Oh yeah. Recall the name of last that night. space game. Oh, that, that was the game, game that scared you that one time. <sighs> no. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Never mind. No. <laughs> Talk about Shadow Horizons, and then you said now that Crystal's computer is on, you can tell me about this game that scared you. Oh yeah, right. Chris right. did some sort of hand thing or something. I, I, oh yeah. I don't know what Jake's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, though. Uh, no. No. Oh, okay. No one knows what I'm. talking <laughs> Jake's weird sometimes. Yeah. What is um, this? <laughs> this is last night. Oh, you guys, I hate you guys. <laughs> um, so I played a game that re- actually exists called Shadow Horizon. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a it's a it's a first person shooter in space. A what? A first person shooter in space. What is it? A first person shooter in space. A first person shooter in space. A what? A first person shooter in space. Uh huh. <laughs> Um, and it's actually in space in that you're actually, like, you know, <laughs> Wait, because it's, it's actually, actually in space. Well, it's not like Mass Effect where most of the time you're in a room that is on a planet that's in also, space. Also, it's more like, it's like that video from Prey where you're on, like, the little globule in the middle yeah, of the room Yeah, it's kind of like that, space. except you can actually be in complete zero gravity. Oh. You, can, you, you have a, a suit that will... A zero G suit? A zero G suit, but you can press, a, like, the F key and that'll actually... Sort of, you know, <laughs> not the, the, not the G. F, so it's bound yeah. to F. Yeah. This like it'll stick you onto the surface, like in Mario Galaxy or Prey or something, where you mm. you get you go down to the relative gravity of the nearest surface, um, and so you can be you can do that, or you can just be floating around with jump jets and whatever system they use. Uh, but it's an interesting game. It's weird. I, I jump jets. <laughs> it's got you know various Rocket game boost. modes, and then it's just got straight up uh, jump jets, <laughs> straight up, straight jump, up jets, jump jet uh, deathmatch stuff. <laughs> And it's it's weird. It's, Zero G it's, jump jets. It's strange when you start playing it because Does it control you, like descent. Uh, I don't. It's been too long since I played. Movement. Yeah, I mean, you can go in any direction. Um, so it's like descent, pretty much. I don't remember. Mm. Uh, I mean, I remember. Do you what sort of detonate a like. mine, uh, like a bomb, at the end, and then have to fly back out of the level in reverse at the end? Because <laughs> I think that's no. what you're trying to describe. Uh, that might not be it. Oh. Um. But it's weird because you, I mean, people could be shooting you from literally any angle. Like I said. And you, yes. And you, you, <laughs> you can be oriented in any direction, obviously. Mm. And, uh. Oh, it's like Half Life. It's basically like Half Life. Like when you're standing sort of on a very small surface. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the part when you're upside down in that game. Can you see your feet? I don't know. It's a good question. I don't, if you look down, that kind of just makes your entire body what if, like what rotate what that direction. So I don't. I don't know. When I didn't, the jump I didn't, jets are off. Yeah, I didn't think to look. Mm. Oh. Yeah, my bad. Anyway, so you're in space. You're in space. It's just um, like the dig. <laughs> yeah, it's like the dig. Oh, it's, it's like exactly the first like puzzle in the dig. The dig. <laughs> right. It is kind of like the first puzzle of the dig, I guess. Yeah. Oh, but it's first puzzle, first person adventure game. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's that. But anyway. there, there is a, a a particularly interesting mechanic where you're you've as you know, I mean, in the game you've got a HUD. It's got It'll highlight your friends, it'll highlight your enemies in red and blue. A lot mm-hmm. of games do that kind of thing. You've got jump jets. The game has sort of a conceit that even though you can't, you wouldn't actually be able to hear anything in space, your suit theoretically simulates the sound. So it, you know, you mm. still hear bullets and you hear a heartbeat like and things like smart that. Suit. Yeah, exactly. A yeah. hi fi and uh, phonograph. And, uh, <laughs> but there's a button you can press that puts you into like power down mode where your whole. The idea is your entire HUD shuts off, your suit, there's no, it's no longer powered, and basically just everything goes completely silent except for your heartbeat and like a very muffled... Breathing? Yeah, and very a very muffled sound of, of when you fire your gun, things like that. And it, it strips away the HUD. It just it makes everything like full yeah, it's on got sweet space. space mode. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's so basically it's Chris space mode. mode. Appears. <clears throat> it's, it's the mode for me, basically. Um the uh, the advantage is you are stealthier. So it's like turning your lights off in a nighttime yeah, car exactly. chase, basically. Right. The disadvantage is that you don't get 
all your HUD stuff, so it's harder to you see. You can't move? No, you can move around. Um, so the jump jets are still active. Yeah, I guess, but you can't you can't go into the mode where you actually simulate gravity. Like, you can't go stick okay, to a yeah, surface. You, like you just float around, basically. Um, it's That's really great. it's really cool. It's a really interesting uh, feature. That's cool. It's sort of aesthetically, what's that game looked like? Um, it almost, I mean, it, it, it is kind of shooting for a similar aesthetic as like Moon or 2001 A Space Oddity or something where it's that, it's that, it's so the, this is pretty much your game. Yeah. I mean, it's mm. set in like <laughs> sort of, it's science fiction, but it's as it's close sort of to like monochrome. Right. Sci-fi. I mean, it's as close to like what is more likely to actually develop as opposed to kind of the Mass Effect style <laughs> where it's just like crazy stuff. Sort of close to the reality with people having space battles with <laughs> right. jump, jump yeah, jets yeah, yeah. and artificial gravity. Well, yeah, right. No, but aesthetically, it's But yeah, cool. I mean, it's like the International Space Station is actually... A level? Like there. It's like, you know, it's oh. been destroyed and you like various factions oh, are fighting it's over... So it's it's the future. It's definitely science fiction, but it's a kind of science fiction where it looks like it's built out of materials we actually have mm. right. in, instead of just kind of like blue... Yeah. Blue science. Thing. Yeah, yeah right. Blue future. Um, it's interesting. It's an interesting game. I got my ass kicked as is... Not uncommon the first time you load up a an online shooter, right? Um, but yeah, I, I got the hang of it. it you, you once you kind of get over the weird gravity, you know, zero gravity element, it gets a lot more interesting. Um, or not interesting, it gets a lot more manageable. It's kind of interesting the whole way through. I'm curious to play it more. I'm also curious how it'll do. It it requires Vista or Windows Seven hmm. and DirectX Ten. It's the first game requires the OSs of the future. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. They're st- sticking to the thematic uh, goal there. Yeah, but it's it's interesting because it's by Future Mark. Like the game was developed by <laughs> the company that that makes the benchmarking right. tools. Right. Oh, crazy! This was the first video game. This is the first actual game they've ever made. And so I guess it. I guess it's probably not. So they were excited about that. They love new 3D. Yeah, I mean, I think probably they don't necessarily see this as like a big profit driver for their company as much as they do trying trying to kind of work with the latest tech that's out there. And I don't entirely know what their goal is. It's It seems like an odd thing, but it is like a real game. I mean, it doesn't feel just like a, a stupid like tech, a tech demo. demo? Yeah, yeah, it right. doesn't feel like an actual benchmarking tool or something. I mean, it is it is a video game that... Does it give you your enough. future mark score at the end of the game? <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be really funny. I wonder if there's some Game over. Your mode. score is this yeah, and your right. future mark rank is... What? Yeah. Yes. It's a separate leaderboard. Right. Yeah. It actually yeah. uses a lot of the Steamworks stuff. It's the whole mm. the whole game's authenticated through Steam and they use Steam community for rankings and stuff. That's cool. Cool. That yeah. makes sense for a company like that to not to deal, not with, deal with that bullshit. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, or to... Yeah, to... Yes. Yeah. Man, oh, by the way, uh, I know this is a topic everyone's sick of, and I'm kind of sick of it too. But oh, I, here we go. Despite that, I do kind of want to bring up Modern Warfare 2 uh, because I, I know, I know, it's horrible. No, um, no. One, just because I'm increasingly fascinated by how insane the just overall atmosphere of this game, like of the of the whole kind of. Public, the movement, public face, yeah. It's just, I mean, it's it's weird. It's like I haven't, every I haven't day really... there's a new explosion mm. about this game. I've never seen anything. What's like the it. latest one? The latest one. Um, I, there have been a couple latest ones at this point. I mean, this <laughs> week, you know, they there was uh, there was the the video fight against grenades spam video, yeah. which was pretty ridiculous. There was the um, they. I guess will not. There will be no console in the PC version. By that I mean no, like right, no, till the console, down console, yeah. console. Mm. Um, you won't be able to change the FOV or increase player count past eighteen total players, so nine v nine. They basically just don't want a PC audience for the next game. Is what they're <laughs> right. trying to say with yeah. this. And then they also, also separately, this is hilarious because this didn't even come from Infinity Ward. Uh, it's just this game seems to attract weird shit from all angles. Um, Direct to Drive said they would not sell the game because it uses Steamworks. <laughs> Uh, which is sort of funny because they've sold a lot of Steamworks games before. They sold Xeno Clash. They sold Empire Total War. Yeah. They sold Fear Two, I think, which I believe used Steam integration, some to some extent. Um, so I guess everyone basically, this is the game to poop on. Um, but I I do, I, I'm of mixed mind about all the PC stuff that's going around, because I do think a lot of people are maybe getting a bit too worked up about it. But I also think Infinity Ward is handling it probably worse than they possibly like the, the absolute. <laughs> I mean, it's really hard to 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 handle this worse. Basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah. The the problem I have with what they're doing, it seems like every other day 
the, Robert Bowling or someone else basically comes out and says, oh, by the way, you can't do this. By the way, you can't have these servers. By the way, you can't uh, adjust your FOV. By the way, you can't uh, – this is our maximum player count. And even if your server can handle more, it doesn't matter, I guess, because you can't run your own server. But, you know, right. you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. Uh, then they're like, oh, no, but the PC version, uh, it's not just a straight console port. It's got special options like mouse control and graphics options. <laughs> and it's like, uh, w- really? That's your... <laughs> <laughs> Originally, it was just going to support 480, 720, or 1080. Yeah. But then we decided to support your native We were going to have you look monitor. up and down with the page up and down buttons <laughs> and the keyboard. Kind of a throwing a bone to the old school PC gamers out there. It's going to require a 360 controller, but, <laughs> right. you know, we um, throw in that old mouse thing. <laughs> And, you know, all of these things are, are – they, they seem really kind of deaf to what you'd think they would know a PC gamer would find objectionable. Well, but what's – They've the, released the, games that – I was about to say Infinity Ward <laughs> must know. I right. Mean, well, their first game was PC only. Yeah. They probably have some people left who made that game and know yeah. what a PC game should have in it. But the thing that I think is most frustrating, right, because they – they're, I'm still going to buy this game on PC because, for one thing, I'm I'm more interested in the single player, and I always have been. Um, I I thought Call of Duty Four multiplayer was cool, but I just don't play as much multiplayer as some people do. It's mainly a single player game for me, so I I am going to get on the PC because that's just how I prefer to play it. That aside, um, my big complaint about what Infinity Ward is doing, besides the the feature set itself, is they're not they haven't done a single thing to actually demonstrate what's better. It's not, you know, they're basically saying, oh, no, don't worry about it. We've got, we've got IWNet. So we're taking mm. out all this stuff, but it's cool because we've got this service. But they haven't but sold it. Yeah, you... they haven't even tried to sell it. They yeah. haven't done anything. They, every day, every other day, they say, we've removed this, we've removed that. It's just been, it's amazing. I wouldn't even have thought there would have been this much stuff to no longer support. Um, <laughs> right. But which is irritating to me, but... I can easily imagine a situation I, where yeah. I played a game that didn't have those things that I was still fine with, right? I mean, real-time strategy <clears> games <throat> frequently don't have any of that stuff, and I don't care. Like, the, the part of that genre is, you know, they, they are supposed to have good matchmaking. They are supposed to have a good lobby system. Yeah. I'm basically fine with that. Infinity Ward is not even attempted. They haven't shown a screenshot. They haven't released a press release. They haven't done a single thing to say this is what we're actually doing. That makes this right, better. They're just telling you what they're not doing? They're just telling you what they're not doing. Everybody knows they're going to support every Xbox Live feature. That stuff's already there. It's already – it's right. well known. It's a known quantity. We have no idea what their new server is. They're basically just saying, look, all you guys who have been buying our games for years, um, you know, who, who were the, the audience that kickstarted this entire series. Uh, I recognize the PC is not as big of a sales force these days. I fully understand that. I understand why they would put more emphasis on the console version. But – to treat it this dismissively uh, and then not even try to explain what they're doing on the other end, I think is is a huge misjudgment. And I, I just, you know, without going after any one particular feature, I just, I, I feel like for people who, you know, for example, are console players and see PC gamers getting all bent out of shape about this and, and think this whole community of people is just a bunch of whining babies, maybe we kind of are, but I, I feel like I should at least try to explain maybe where some of these grievances come from because I, I I do think Infinity Ward could be doing this a whole lot better. I don't know if you guys have any other thoughts on that, but I don't know. It's been it's been pretty amazing to me to see how this has been folding out. Yeah. It's gonna be curious as uh, I'm gonna be curious to see how it sells because like right now yeah. it's not it's not the pre orders are not like burning burning no. up the charts on Steam. Torchlight has been it's been interesting actually. It's been a Torchlight's been an interesting um kind of benchmark on Steam because it's been kind of in the like middle a little bit maybe in the top middle sales on steam it's always been above pre-orders for for, uh, modern warfare 2 consistently which means it's selling on a daily basis at least three times as many units as modern warfare is steam measures with dollars exactly and it costs a third the price i'm sure that'll go up when the game actually comes out but for example by way of comparison dragon age was selling very well on the steam charts for weeks and weeks as a pre-order um much better than than modern warfare 2 so i i feel like they're I don't know. I, I don't think they'll see a single lost sale on console for any of this shit. I think the, the game will still sell millions and millions and millions and millions and millions. It's not going to affect them financially. But it, I, you know, did um, it's not my job to care I about think that. I, it's, it's yeah, yeah. What's that, Nick? Oh no, I. I <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't want to be the other guy. Wait, really? If you have a counter, I would. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't really. I can't. I can't disagree with anything you said. Oh, I, I just, see. I, you know, I could just take a gander at what they what Activision clearly, you know, yeah, is not well, concerned. Oh no, it's, uh, it's funny what, actually. I haven't seen. I, I, you know, I would suspect that probably. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I it's it's hard to judge uh, intent on the internet. Serious oh, it, intent. It, is. it absolutely is. I mean, I'm saying all and this. I, and I'm I wonder. I, I also game, wonder if right? if so. if if the PC version was simply going to track lower than than before anyway. If if it wasn't simply just you know going to be another shift towards the console version. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, it's definitely clear like where the the uh, yeah where the series is going. I mean, it's, yeah. I just you know, I feel like it is a console series. It, at you this know, point, yeah, very, very I, much. So. I, I agree with that, but I, I still can't help but feel. Yeah, no, like I mean, it is, it is shitty to... that they haven't done it. Uh, you know, I guess we'll see what happens after it comes out, and yeah. you know, I. Uh, other, by the way, uh, when you say kind of what how Activision thinks about this, I haven't seen anyone else report this, but I listened to just as part of my regular job, I listened to Activision's financial call today, their oh, right. investor question and answer, and someone actually asked, one of the analysts asked about this and asked if they're concerned about. Um, their PC sales. I mean, obviously, Activision doesn't expect PC sales to be as high as console sales, but they obviously still have sales projections, or they wouldn't mm-hmm. release the SKU. I mean, they yeah, still, yeah, they're gonna, you know, yeah. they still need it to sell a certain amount of units. And so, this analyst said, "Are, are you concerned about this?" And the um, Mike Griffith, who's the president of Activision Publishing, said, "You know, we're definitely watching it. We're definitely very aware of what people are saying, but ultimately, we feel that this is a a more user friendly experience, and it'll yeah. it'll pay off for us." Yeah. And, you know, if that's what they really think, if that's what they're really trying to do, that's fine. I just I wish they would actually try to show me what that is. Well, you know? yeah, I feel like that it, they're they haven't shown uh, IWNet on the console side, have they? I mean, no, like, but they're using Xbox Live. I mean, you know, uh, Bungie yes. does, you mean, you, you can have Bungie. I mean, but they, they haven't and like those, well, those I know, but I'm, features. I'm just but saying the they haven't actually experience sh- is still just going to be Xbox Live. Well, right. But I just like works. they haven't shown the interface or, or anything like that, really, yeah. have they? Uh, no, but I, I guess, I guess what I, I guess my, my I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just wondering if, if they're simply their whole marketing strategy was, you know, we're not going to show much yeah. uh, in general. Well, and then except when, that they've spoiled huge aspects well, of the game on a weekly basis. It's all I can do because, again, I care more about the single player. It's been an, a huge effort for me to not be spoiled, I, which is quite frankly extremely irritating. Like, I, I would much rather they spoil the shit out of the multiplayer experience and not spoil the actual plot events in single mm. player. That seems like I a haven't weird been watching the recent videos. I guess. Um, there have been huge things revealed that I, I'm trying to not watch any of them. Mm. Um, anyway, this oh, is the tra- probably I guess really- the, 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 what? Uh, what game was it? The, the NBA game, the big trailer that you know pretty much revealed the entire twist. NBA game? Well, the, the trailer that debuted during the uh, uh, the finals, the NBA finals. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to spoil it on this, but... Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Sorry, sorry for that sober, downbeat section, but people, a bunch of people have asked asked me to talk about it on the podcast, and I, yeah. I, I do have some opinions, so there's that. Uh, today PC at work, games. I, I, you guys actually cover news. So I was curious. To, <laughs> I did. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, Nick whatever. Plays video games. You have I'm a week out of it. Careers writing news about games, and yeah. I wondered if you happen to notice this or not. But today at work, a lot of people noticed that their copies of Steam had the Left 4 Dead demo just slotted in as uninstalled or Left 4 Dead 2 demo on their games list. Mm-hmm. When the they, demo, like it just showed up. Everyone just was. Everyone's list was populated with that. Is that <laughs> did that actually happen, or is that just that people are crazy? Because I don't know. All right. It showed up on mine. I don't know. Did you I mean, order the game? They, well, they released the demo this week. Did you actually go to the Steam store and say, I would like you to add the <laughs> Left 4 Dead 2 demo to my games list? Or did it oh, just... that's a good question. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah that's the... That's I, think, I think that Valve yeah. may have actually just pre-populated everyone's games <laughs> list with the Left 4 Dead that's 2 hilarious. demo. That's hilarious. It's a little awkward that if is... they actually did that. Yeah, um, well, I mean, it's not like they're forcing it to download, but that is that is kind of weird. Yeah, but it is like Apple got a lot of shit when iTunes suddenly uh, asked everyone if they wanted to install the Safari web browser. Uh, yeah, well, mine does it all the time, and it's really irritating. Yeah, I keep telling it stop installing <laughs> Safari, but I mean, Left 4 Dead's not <laughs> popping up with a window that's saying, "Are you sure you don't want to download?" This? I know, but it's free. It is. It is. Left 4 Dead is also more fun than Safari, but <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if Valve is going to actually offer that as a paid uh, placement thing for mm. other companies, or oh, if or if they're see, just yeah. saying. We're going to throw Left 4 Dead 2 demo, and everyone and our entire install base now has this sitting at the top of their games list. Right. Uh, like, there's a guy at work who just has TF2, 
so his games list is TF2, Left 4 Dead 2 <laughs> demo. 2 demo. Uh, hmm. I didn't know if that had been noticed or if that was a thing or what, because it was. it's definitely an interesting move if that is right. the case. I don't have yeah, anything else to a, say about it other than that. No, that's but, a good uh, question. Because I that, actually pre-ordered Left 4 Dead 2, so I didn't notice if that, I have right. no yeah, yeah. of seeing if that's the case or not. Huh, that is really interesting. I yeah. I've never, I've never if that is true, that. Uh, Randy Pitchford deep. is just crapping all of yeah. <laughs> Man, that guy's been on the warpath. Oh, man, yeah. He yeah. apparently dumped on Valve some more this week. I didn't yeah. even I didn't read this latest one, but that guy, he he likes to poo on them. <laughs> oh, is that what he likes? Oh, well, he might. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. Is the Left 4 Dead 2 demo, what environment is it? What is, I it's the, um, is it the thing we played at PAX, or is it... it um, did we play that? No, no. It's uh, it's, it's not the it's, carnival. It's actually one? what was shown at E3, which okay, is uh, the New Orleans uh, French Quarter. Okay, first two chapters of that. That's a worthless question to ask on this podcast. <laughs> people who have either played it or haven't. But yeah, uh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, you know what I never talked about that I played several days this week, past weekend, I think. Um, Hammer Fight. Mm. Have you guys like seen the ads for that on Steam or anything? No, no. That I I. This was a game that was in the uh, Independent Game Festival in 2008 as Hammerfall, and I didn't even make the connection. I just there was one I signed on to Steam, you know, a week ago or over the weekend or something, and there was a big ad for History of Hammer Fight, this game, and it had a really just intriguing. It's called, looks, it's called History of Hammer Fight. I think it's called Hammer Fight, but they sometimes in like the kind of art treatment, right. it sometimes says History of Hammer Fight. I think it's hmm. actually just called Hammer Fight. Um, and it just there was something about the image that looked really cool. It had a really unique style. It was very well defined. It's got a very uh, uh, that that look where it's it's sort of pixel art, but it's the sort of pseudo high res pixel art of like late era PC two D stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like Diablo two, where it's not like eight bit pixel art, but it is each pixel is defined. Right. You right. know, it's not anti aliased, and it's. It looks really interesting. It's got that really sort of arc- arcane look to it. It looks really cool. And I, I didn't know anything about it, and I'd forgotten that I'd seen it at the IGF. And so I picked it up. It's a weird, fucking crazy-ass game. Uh, it's kind of like Ragdoll Kung Fu in that it's really physics-driven, and you control it with mouse gestures. Um, but it's better than Ragdoll Kung Fu and way more chaotic and crazy. Hmm. You basically control this flying contraption. It's sort of a vaguely steampunk kind of thing. Uh, this little helicopter-like Some device, sort of like whirly gig. Yeah, it's kind of like a, <laughs> like a whirly bird. More similar to that than you might think, because the way that you fight is you have a big hammer or ball and chain or sword that just sticks out of your this. So it's like a, it's like a, a Robotnik boss vehicle from yes. one of the yeah. Sonic <laughs> it's, games. It's very much like that, except that the way you attack is literally by like spinning your mouse <laughs> around, and it's like a it's sort of a vaguely one-to-one motion with your craft. And so you swing your your ball and chain or whatever literally by just moving your craft in such a way that causes the ball and chain to swing. It's not like you. It's not like a Wii gesture where you do it and then the game says, "Oh, you've chosen swing," and then it right. replicates the swing. Like so it's, it's more like action. Wii Motion Plus. It's more like Wii. Yeah. Um, like it's Wii a Sports weird, Resort. It's a weird, weird game. It's it's the kind of thing where it's infuriating at first. I've been talking about a lot of games that are like this lately, I guess, but... You're just furious. Yeah. Like, well, you can imagine... Furious gamer. It's easy to imagine with, (laughs) with, I assume, with the, with like that control system, I'm sure you can imagine how fiddly and weird that could get. You know, like, it's very easy to be swinging a thing around and then accidentally hit the enemy with your actual what, craft. What sort of perspective is this? Is three quarters? Side, side it's like, so it's like joust it's kind of? It's, it's all 2D. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, like it's an arena-based thing or is it... Um, some of it's arena-based, some of it's a side-scrolling thing where you okay. go through a level and like escort someone or something. Um, but you you just you fight off enemies, basically. You have to survive for a certain amount of time usually in these levels or kill a, a boss. Sweet. And it, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's just weird. It's like one of the strangest games i've played in a while but it's the kind of thing where when you get good at it you're good for such an amazing reason like you 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 essentially have to like teach yourself and force yourself to control the unbelievable amount of chaos that's going on the screen i mean you can just imagine like when when you and the enemies all fight by like bashing yourselves into each other and swinging huge <laughs> physics driven weapons around like it's just it's crazy um it's equally as kind of frustrating and fulfilling as demon souls or a game like that but in the total opposite direction i mean demon souls is the opposite of a physics driven game 
you know, it's like it's a much more Japanese design game where it's about being very precise and it's being, you know, you do the mm. exact right thing and you um, – not like Mega Man, not, not – you don't have to memorize stuff, but it's – you know, it's – you can be very precise in that game. Right. Whereas Hammer Fight is about – it's just – it's about trying to do anything you can. It's like bullfighting – or not bullfighting, bull riding rodeo stuff where you're just trying to do anything you can to contain <laughs> this ridiculous, like, just insanity – you know, it's like all you can do to just keep yourself from just slamming into the enemy. And like it's – but once you get to the point where you can actually correct like on a, on a millisecond basis because you, you see that your weapon is swinging slightly the wrong way or this guy suddenly flies in off the side of the screen, it's really cool when you actually get that stuff to the point where you can – you feel like you have any kind of handle on it. But oh my god, it's weird. Sweet. It's a weird, weird game. How much is that game? It's like 10 bucks Sweet. or 20 bucks. I forget. 30 bucks. It was, there was a pre-order discount on it, but I, that's over now, obviously. Fifty nine ninety five for the yeah. PC. <laughs> um, so that's a weird game. So I, I don't know. There's a demo you can get from the – not from Steam, but through the – it's a Russian developer. Like hammerfight.biz? It's like – I think it's – .ru. .ru. It's – I don't know. .biz, .ru. .museum. You can get to the official site through the Steam page if you have Steam. Um, or a Google. Or the Google. So yeah. Reader mail? <laughs> right, yeah, take a break. Real. Taking a break. Oh, all right. The final break. I think we said that yesterday too. This is the real last break <laughs> now though, unless we have too much reader mail. <laughs> <laughs> we we might. Video game. Are we back? Yeah. Yeah, all right, now we're, we're back. back. Yeah. Uh I forget if actually we may have already mentioned this yesterday. I don't even remember. But this is the last episode of Idle Thumbs? Um no. <laughs> uh <laughs> Shadow Zenith created a crazy cross stitch like an actual real life cross stitch <laughs> yeah. pattern uh that he mailed jake he mailed the telltale games courtesy of jake or whatever the phrase is and uh <laughs> it's amazing it's it to it's a uh it's, it's a very nice frame what do they call those stitch? samplers yeah it's a little sampler yeah. mm. uh and it says uh it, it looks like something that your grandma would have hung yeah, up exactly. in house. Yeah, yeah, yeah right but it says in big writing, adventure games, and in small writing, honey on the cat hair makes a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a, a great piece of oh. kind of like, uh, of kind of... It's like home is where the heart is or something yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. That oh. kind of country wisdom kind of thing. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's my favorite thing. It's on my desk at work now. So. Yeah, we'll put a picture of it up on the blog because it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, this guy actually, again, physically made this. It's not a Photoshop it's, uh, it's like what most thing. people do. It's, he said it's it a real thing for real. so good. So thank you, uh, Zenith. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, so thanks to that guy. That is incredible. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, Felix Cunningham has another game dream. Um, hopefully we didn't forget too many of these. Our email box is, has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, it's hard to go through, but <laughs> he that's says, how much we care. <laughs> no, it's just, there's, it's so I mean, I've, read all, I've, read, all, I've read all of it, but it's hard. It's hard keeping I track know. of it all. Cause I, yeah, I we, never do I it to the last second. At least, Chris and I read every single email. You don't. Nick I, doesn't care. That's uh, why you're fired. <laughs> um, um, but so then we always forget because we've marked them as red. Uh, right. Exactly. So then, anyway, Felix Cunningham writes, "Hi, thumbs. I don't know if he still wanted more game dreams, but this we one do. Was too bizarre not to send in. Last night I had a dream that I was at some kind of game conference dinner thing in Japan with a large table, lots of people eating and talking. At the end of the table was Itagaki. Uh, I guess he means Tomonobu Itagaki from uh, Ninja Team." Ninja, Ninja Team Gaiden. Ninja. Team Ninja, 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 Ninja no longer, Team. No longer Ninja, there. Former team yeah. member. Of and sitting, sitting across from him, or sitting next to him, was Suda51. Sitting across from Suda was Ryan Davis of Giant Bomb. I walked over <laughs> and started talking to Suda, asking about a game of his I'd recently played. But it wasn't a real game. It was a game I only played inside the dream. And it was surreal to say the least. I think it was an SNES game. And it started out as a side-scrolling shooter a la Gradius. And it slowly morphed into a barely comprehensible game, which had the core gameplay revolving around being presented on screen with a plate of Japanese food, then guessing the parts that an extremely picky elderly Japanese lady would actually eat. <laughs> that seems like an arcade game that they might actually have in Japan. Yeah, that I, may, I may have that, played that already. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I was asking Suda what the hell was up with this game. Then Itagaki butted into the conversation to complain about being forced to watch several giant bomb quick looks in a row. <laughs> My, my <laughs> myself and Ryan Davis laughed half-heartedly, forcing smiles while it, while Itagaki looked on sternly, and I slowly backed away. I couldn't make this shit up. Anyway, thanks guys. I'll miss you casting pods in my face. Felix Cunningham, Australia. 
That's pretty hilarious. I like yes. that someone wrote into our podcast yep. with a dream about a Ryan dream Davis about and the Ryan bombcast. Davis the fire. Yeah. So uh, that's funny. Um, what else? Declared funny by Chris. Yeah. Uh, ha, ha, ha. What is game? Yeah. Anthony Pastorelli writes. Oh, this guy's setting up a boycott. Attention, Chris Rambo, Nick Breedon, and Jake Video Games, Rod King. This is a formal notice to inform you that if episode 50 Vital Thumbs is indeed the last one, I have decided I'll be boycotting the internet. I believe this is something that you, as the person of Vital Thumbs, will not take lightly since it was revealed that Jake Rodkin actually controls the internet, or what Tim Schafer's parents see on the internet, and therefore has a deep <laughs> vested interest in its continued usage. I stress this is not a joke and that Chris and Jake should not pretend like I didn't warn them when the time comes. Signed, Anthony P., internet user. How is this going to work? Like, if well, he finds see, out, if he finds out ahead say, of time yeah. that this is the last episode, he'll never n- know that we exactly. said... Exactly. This is... He's created a weird right. logic If he ever hole. comes back, then he'll never then know. he's screwed. He's, yeah, yeah, so I guess you got to keep using the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Foiled. <laughs> Score one for me, controller of the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Master of logic. Also, I'm the master Video of logic. Video games. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that, like, Modus Ponens was involved or something like that. <laughs> Uh, Raiden MGS uh, basically just writes in with a What's screenshot. A uh, Raiden, Raiden MGS, whatever the character from Metal Gear Solid. Mm. Mm. Um, it's cool to get, get a letter from that guy. Or, or just Raiden from Microsoft Game Studios. That, that could be that, in fact. In fact, it could be Ryan Aiden from Microsoft <laughs> Game Studios. <laughs> it's probably that. I think probably. that's probably who it is. I yeah. know that guy. Oh, okay. So, what's up, Ryan? Um, <laughs> I had a dream about him once. Anyway, oh, yeah? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see. He his email is basically a screenshot of the like little closing score box from the IGN review of Tekken Six, uh, and he particularly wanted us, I guess, to read the sound section. They gave a seven point five to the sound in Tekken in Tekken Six on PS3, uh, with the explanation: decent tunes with an odd combination of numerous languages. Characters speak in English, Japanese, and Chinese. How do they understand each other? And then there's a question mark and an exclamation point after that. The exclamation point is for integrity. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I enjoyed reading that little box. <laughs> um, I enjoyed your disclaimer there. Yeah. This is one Jake marked. I don't know what it is. I it's... hate that you always say when I mark an email. Oh, is this the one with the dream? <laughs> Better be good, Jake. Is it? I don't know. It's by a guy named uh, Michael uh, Gleboff. Might be. He says, Beyond the Wizard or I Dream of Weenie. Yeah, it must be a dream. <laughs> Hello, Thumbs. Um, firstly, I'd like to congratulate you on 50 Fantastic Episodes. Uh, Second paragraph. A blasting Wizard's wit and intelligent perspective. Oh, Blasting Wizard's. Uh, he goes on, anyway, I'd, I, I thought I'd leave you with a dream I had a few nights ago that included a strange and somewhat disturbed Jake Level video game appearance. <laughs> By Jake Level, I mean, of course, it had very little to do with video games, but enough that I'm still able to talk about it. So <laughs> <laughs> you ass. So my, dream, so my dream featured a, stale, a fairly standard version of myself facing what seemed to be a fairly average day. As it continued as dreams do, I seemed to get lost in time, perhaps through my own doing, and was suddenly working on a fast food cart in some large standard city. Considering I've never worked on a food cart before and lack a taste for that stuff, this was odd, but I went along with it because it's the dream and that's how they work. Before I knew it, I was mobbed by a gang of Grand Theft Auto characters, a group of the same character, Bruce from Grand Theft Auto 4, who wanted a meat I didn't serve. <laughs> then, all of a sudden, amidst the Brucies, a homeless man rushes my counter and shouts, Give me a hot dog, it's for my wizard wand. <laughs> I can't remember much beyond that. But I hope I gave the gentleman what he wanted. Perhaps it was some kind of arcane magic or tool needed for either wiener dog or bovine shapeshifting. I'm not sure, but I'm always up for a shrouded conclusion, so I'll remain in speculation. In conclusion, thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure. P.S. Jake, never stop playing. Never stop not playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, enjoy your new position at Bethesda as thumb asshole. Wow. <laughs> and Chris, the wizard. Uh, best he doesn't care what you do. Wizard. Yeah, <laughs> the wizard. Um. Let's see. Jim Hendricks. Nick hmm. Brecken. This t-shirt describes my feeling towards you. And Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. He's got a great message. When you uh, click on this link, <laughs> what is revealed is a t-shirt with a picture of a shirtless man punching a wizard in the face, accompanied by the text, man punching a wizard in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. Um <laughs> that's what you did that guy is the wizard yeah. in that t-shirt right. and you are the shirtless man in this room 
Oh, I'm not the wizard. And on the t-shirt. No, no, this, no. Is, this isn't him punching you. Uh, this, is this is you, you destroying <laughs> dreams and the wizard. So what do you think about that? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Andy K writes, Far Cry 2 question. Dear Thumbs. You know what? He deserved it. Because he's a shitty wizard. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa, it was actually a pretty well-rendered wizard. I enjoyed yeah, that I wizard. Yeah. But I mean, he didn't enchant my shit. But, so. Oh, is that wizard? Yeah. Oh, that was that, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> That's actually a torchlight. Yeah, that was after shirt. he like disenchanted my gun on the back. Fuck on the you, back wizard. of that shirt, there was a picture it's, of a white. On the back uh, of the shirt, it uh, says item. "Wizard disenchanted yeah, my gun." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so he had it coming. Anyway. Moving on. Uh, so Andy Keener writes, Far Cry 2 question. Dear Thumbs, what is the best gun? Andy Keener. Probably an enchanted gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go to, you find this wizard. Yeah. I don't know. I like the sniper rifle. The uh, bolt action sniper rifle. Bolt action. It's pretty sweet. It's it's the best. A bolt action rifle. There, there are better ones, sort of objectively, automatic ones and stuff, but the bolt action one's pretty satisfying. Yeah. It goes to show you that the most powerful gun <laughs> is not always the best gun. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your philosophical it, reflection? Yeah. For That's Brecken's well, I'm, wisdom I'm of the week. Well, I'm adding a second layer for the oh, final okay, episode. Oh, okay, yeah, right. I, I want to get yeah, some. Yeah, no, you're going deeper. You're digging deeper. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really digging. Yeah. <laughs> you're digging that bolt action rifle? <laughs> Wait, did you ask people on Twitter to post about <laughs> <laughs> I may have done that. What did you ask? <laughs> I just started another email, and it starts with, Hello, Thumbs, this is a response to Nick's Twittered entreaty for Far Cry 2 question. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, we just got a whole bunch of emails like, in, the last, in the last, like, minute. <laughs> Well, we need something to talk about. Did you really send this like a minute ago? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Um, so he says, okay. What so else are we going to talk about on this podcast? I, yeah, good question. Um, I've been playing the, <laughs> I've been playing the yeah, I've been playing the first 20 minutes of the game for the first time since I bought it on Steam over a year ago, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, this is also providing a better context for all the Far Cry 2 discussion in the earlier podcast. <laughs> we just got five more Far Cry 2 emails. <laughs> oh, man. This is great. Steve Gaynor has written in. Oh, man. Oh! <laughs> uh, certainly in the first handful of Idle Thumbs, you, guessed, you guys gushed about Far Cry 2. Um, I suppose I need to ask, has Far Cry 2 driven any of you to tears, or do you expect it to in the future? Is there a 17th level hidden behind a sunset somewhere in dynamic Far Cry 2 time? I'm uh, I'm messing up the tears Spielberg reference, but you know what I mean. I love the podcast. I'm sorry to see it move on, but I'll be hanging around the forums and checking the site. Best of luck, Nick, and fuck you, Nick, of course. Yes. Um, best, John, the intensely originally named Irish John on the Idle forums. I just realized I should have called myself Idle John nuts. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I think we met that guy. That's the guy we met, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we did. He's a cool dude. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so have have any of us been driven to tears by Far Cry 2? I've def- I definitely have had some frustrating experiences in that game. Yeah. Not- mainly mainly it has to do with... Uh, have you been driven... Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, literally driving uh, halfway across the map and then dying and <laughs> yeah. having to drive across the yeah, map again. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. actually... Um, uh, we should maybe just... Go to the next question, which oh, yeah. is from Nels Anderson. Yeah, go ahead. Who oh, yeah. writes, uh, what was your most embarrassing slash lame Far Cry 2 moment? Mine was having my permadeath playthrough ended by being run down by a single Jeep at an otherwise cleared checkpoint. Went down like a spastic squirrel on the interstate. <laughs> That's a good question. I, f- I wish I had a better answer <laughs> Most embarrassing and lame moment? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure I had moments. I can't. Mine was not playing it past the first couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Yeah, I don't know. Probably, two, prob- my my lamer moments involve uh, height, and height? just yeah, just generally just falling off, something? just generally getting to the top of a of a of a like enormous mountain, yeah, and uh, forgetting that it's a realistic game and not like you know crisis. I can't turn on like maximum uh, whatever, Armor? yeah, yeah right. maximum uh, foot strength. Yeah. You know, just tumbling down a maximum rocky, uh, maximum broken bones. Yeah, did you read this one? Okay. Um, actually, speaking of what you just said, my most embarrassing moment, I guess, if anyone would have been watching me, was me probably spending about two hours trying to get on top of this plateau where I could see a, uh, I could see like stuff up there. I could see the uh, one of the little um, briefcases with the di- with diamonds in it. Oh yeah. And I swear to God, I ran around this plateau <laughs> for like two hours trying to jump. You know, sometimes in video games, you could kind of like fake it out by kind of jumping onto like jump and sort of slide the down vertex on yeah, the yeah, geometry yeah, yeah, yeah. and kind of like keep. Oh my God. I love that aspect there was of no way to get up there. <laughs> it's the best. And 
I wasted so much time. Did you ever get up there? No, ever. I, I think the only way to get up there. <laughs> the jetpack was like hidden in a bush. Well, no, I think, <laughs> I think probably what you do is <laughs> you, you probably use the uh, hang glider from a higher yeah, point. Yeah, that's got to be it. And I, and I realized that eventually, but I couldn't stop right. trying to get up to that goddamn place. <laughs> It was horrible. What a waste uh, of time. Man, I've spent so much time jumping at uh, giant walls in my gaming career. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty great. Um, in fact, yeah. it's kind of like as as PC games have become more sophisticated, I, I've sort of missed that. Just, yeah, just like, the breakable Because I'm going to jump around like an asshole anyway. Yeah, I, know, I agree. I may as well have some sort of you know outlet yeah. for that. Uh, <laughs> something that may, you know, maybe I'll find an Easter egg. You know, right. You know, break the game. Yeah. That, that's, that's satisfying on some level. So, yeah. Um, Ron Evil Dead Ron DeBona writes, Dear Thumbs, if someone presented you with a box and told you that if you pushed the red button, Nick wouldn't leave and the show would go on, <laughs> but every copy of Far Cry 2 in the world, including oh, the source code, would disintegrate. Oh, shit. Would you push it? Oh, man. Cheers. Ron Evil Dead Ron DeBona. Philadelphia, <laughs> Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. GroovyGamer.net. P.S. Fuck Nick. Lol. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So he, he, he avoided tipping his hand yeah. as to which <laughs> yeah. which action he would take at the end of the lol kidding. Oh, yeah, that's true. I, yeah. Hmm. Well, Nick, <laughs> would you push the button? I wouldn't push that damn button. <laughs> yeah, obviously he wouldn't push that. <laughs> Nick has already, Don't look at me. Nick has already declined to press that button. Uh, that already occurred in real life. So yeah. you, you destroyed every copy of Far Cry 2. <laughs> Wait, no, you no, didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> oh, you're right. Good. He you saved Far about Cry You sacrificed over... yeah. life. Yeah. I'm not the master of logic after all. <laughs> <laughs> I have no answer to that question. I refuse to answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, ben Gilbert writes, Far Cry 2 questions. There is but only one. How could the developers have let a game-breaking bug slip through QA process, resulting in people enjoying their game for thoroughly 20-plus hours before it comes to an end with a corrupted save file? <laughs> ben Gilbert, contributing editor, joystick.com. Um, <laughs> how, could good, they? how could they? I don't know. I think, well, that's a question for the ages. We'll have to reflect on yeah. it. Yeah. They, they could, though, apparently. Uh, if, they, if they did. I guess they did. Fact. I don't know. I didn't. I guess I got lucky. I didn't have that problem. Um, um, but yeah, that stuff happens sometimes. Hey, Thumbs asks uh, or says Andy Rada or Rita. How do you feel about Africa and games as a setting? I've always been intrigued by Africa and how it's basically an interesting and mysterious setting as an alien world. It's as interesting as an alien world. I am glad to see game developers seem to realize that as well, as Africa has been appearing in more and more games like Resident Evil 5 or Halo. I don't know about you guys, but when I hear a game takes place in Africa, I'm roughly 100% more interested in it than I would have been uh, otherwise. Even Africa for, is the new co-op. Even, <laughs> even dumb baby games, I'd probably play Imagine <laughs> Africa. <laughs> Imagine Africa. Anyway, I guess that was only one question, even though the subject of this email would imply there are more than one. The subject being Far Cry, Far Cry 2 questions. Uh, I'm sad you've been ending the, as a regular podcast. I've been on board since the episode with Brad Shoemaker all those months ago. Good luck, Nick, and thanks for a great podcast. Uh, Africa in games. I agree with him. I think his point about the alien world is well taken. I mean, mm -hmm. most alien worlds basically are this entire planet looks like one specific place on Earth. Right. Like, that's actually less interesting than actual Earth most of the time. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I, I much – I and, yeah. most of the time – I mean, unless – the reason I always talk about shit like the moon and stuff like that is because that actually is a genuinely different environment, right? It's I mean, most sci-fi stuff is just like it's a swamp planet. Yeah. Like, I wonder if that well, came from Star Wars here. or if that was a sci-fi. No, trope I think that stuff's been that. going on since like Flash Gordon and, and stuff like that. I mean, um, this entire planet is Italy. Yeah, exactly. I don't think um, done that Star one. Trek had stuff like that for sure. Maybe um, Star Trek did. Yeah, I agree with them. I think Africa uh, is a, is a, a really compelling environment. <laughs> All right, uh, we're gonna read Steve's. Maybe is or do we have more? Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't see Steve's. Oh, Steve Gainer, uh, Steve Hot Scoops Gainer asks. Oh my God, we got so many emails. He he wrote like eighteen emails. What is your main favorite thing about Far Cry Two? <laughs> <laughs> Africa. Yeah. Bolt Says action Andy rifle. Rita. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, Steve did write yeah. a thousand more. What is this guy? <laughs> he says, my main favorite thing shooting a dude is... Oh, he did say bolt action. Wow. Yes. <laughs> my main favorite yeah, thing no, shooting we... a dude with a bolt action rifle, I guess, but the dart gun is also pretty awesome. 
says Steve yeah, Gannon. Oh, cool. also, Steve says, I really like how there are animals wandering around, but I wish you could pet them. Clint Hawking, parentheses, main dude, Far Cry 2, said on his Twitter that they had a design spec for petting the zebras at one point, and I'm sorry they took it out. Steve is just secretly <laughs> proxying his way onto this yeah, final episode. Yeah, of Steve Hunt. Gaynor He's, also says we can trade like somebody's off. Somebody's jockeying for a job. <laughs> oh, also, my main other favorite thing is the time-lapse footage of the time changing when you sleep at your safe house. That's awesome. Oh, that's pretty cool, yeah. Anyway, congratulations, Nick. Uh, then he adds, fuck Nick. <laughs> Those <laughs> and were then separate he says, emails. Fa- BTW, have you guys played Fallout 3? <laughs> oh, we have. That's the last email. Wait. Try and wizard Far Cry 2 IGN.com. Is that also Steve? No, this uh, is from Josh Hoppel. <laughs> Hey, Chris, Nick, and video games, if you could have one wizard skill from trying in Far Cry 2, what would it be? Oh, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> Creating boxes above people's heads. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Then I, God, if you could do that, I could have gotten You could have gotten out of the thing, oh, exactly. Man, just made a bunch of boxes. Yeah. an emergent. Yeah. Oh, man, that <laughs> reminds me. you drop it on somebody's head. Someone wrote in an email with another Instead similar hypothetical question like that about, like, would you rather play Trine in Far Cry 2 or Far Cry 2 in Trine or something? I, Jesus. I, I wish I could find it. Man, we're pulling out all the, the really deep questions for the final episode. <laughs> I know. What is game? <laughs> no one sent that in. You all suck. Yeah. Are we done now, maybe? Is this the end of the pod? I guess. I mean, I, actually, before we, before we stop, I want to... Uh, generally address um just the overall response that we've gotten since we said we're stopping the podcast uh because it has been kind of surprising to me and it's been pretty amazing three like heart-wrenching weeks yeah yeah uh, no it's actually been like extreme yeah we've gotten i would estimate hundreds of emails at this point in total uh and lots and lots and lots of twitter replies and forum posts and like maybe a Facebook message. Facebook messages, yeah. Um, thanks. An ICQ like, message. A lot to everyone who uh, has listened to us for however long each of you individually has. It's like, I don't know. It's been really surprising. I don't think any of us expected yeah. thousands of people to listen to us every week when we started doing this. Uh, and it's been it's been cool yeah. to see everyone's response and see how much people to see how much you claim to have gotten leaving. out of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the people who are pleased that we're leaving did not write in. Yeah, exactly. Fuck those guys. Yeah. They're yeah. getting their wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you happy now? Yeah. Oh, Chris is happy. I'm happy. Um, but yeah, but I mean, in all seriousness, it's, I, I've been really uh, surprised. We, I, I didn't, yeah. we haven't, I haven't been reading them because I didn't know how to select which ones to read, but I mean. Oh, you've been reading them, but not reading them I've been the reading podcast. them, but I haven't read them a lot on the podcast. But suffice to say, we got a lot of extremely... Uh, extremely nice emails from people and it's been pretty awesome so thanks everyone for writing those I promise we've read all of them even if we haven't read them aloud Nick hasn't read them <laughs> <laughs> no I should say thank you to the people who uh, uh, wished, wished me well uh, and thanks for not beating me up too badly yeah also nice. thanks to the people who said a lot of them Nick. a lot of them yeah. did those simultaneously well yeah but I sort of invited that so that's yeah fine. yeah yeah that's, no, that's fair it's all, it's all good yeah I don't think you deserved all of those fuck Nick emails <laughs> <laughs> I think those people are cruel yeah. Thanks, Jake. Uh huh. So yeah. So what what, what we're going to try to do, maybe going forward, is uh, ooh, you're revealing the fact. Were we going to? Yes. Yeah, we're going to try to Jake and Steve and I systematically remove all old episodes <laughs> from the <laughs> archive, one by one, one week at a time, randomly selected. So we're starting with this episode's only going to be available for a week, and then next week episode forty nine goes offline. So you have to sort of, it's a collectible thing. I'm just making this stuff up right now. I thought we were just going to roll some dice and choose a different number each week. Oh man, it's a random, it's a random roll. Yeah. Uh, no, what we're actually going to try to do is... <laughs> and there's a 2% chance of the podcast just completely... <laughs> <laughs> we're actually... Of the internet to we're yeah, hiring like, a, the, yeah. We're, yeah, we're getting the, the shitty wizard algorithm from Trine and plugging it into the PHP yeah. backend. Trine. Trine. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh Torchlight. Man. Also, the Trine wizard is not a shitty wizard, Would you rather play the shitty wizard in Trine or Torchlight? <laughs> <laughs> the Torchlight wizard will be... Um, W- pairing up with Chris, uh, Steve, Hot Scoops, Gainer, and I uh, <laughs> to do something real. You want to talk about this now that I've written this? <laughs> yeah. it's, we, we don't have a very concrete plan, but we're going to try to do a, a podcast less regular, less than, this regular than this. It's not going to be weekly, so don't don't expect that because it's not going to happen. We don't, but, we don't know what frequency it no, is. But, but we're going to try to get together from time to time 
and and put out a podcast with you guys. Um, with you guys live. live we're inviting you all <laughs> well, in. I can't say anything that'll make people think we're going to do more than we're actually going to do. No. We're not going to do a live thing. No, we're doing nothing. <laughs> but yeah, we, we will put out a podcast occasionally um, when we can find the time to do it and when we all – when Steve has time and, and whatever else. But um, every time I play a video game. Yeah, maybe we can get Jake to play a video games. We'll so record a podcast. Annual podcast. It'll be, yeah. <laughs> so 2015, we'll have the year of the PS3 uh, Pod Blast Spectacular. Until then. And Jake will have played just, a PS3 game to I completion. Keep, I just keep lying right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm ruining this. Um, but I, I also just to sort of, I guess, continue off what I was saying before. Um, I will say that when... Um, you know, a lot of people asked us, why don't we just keep doing a weekly podcast anyway? And I, I, the answer to that, I would say, is when we started doing this podcast, it was a pretty specific combination of us that well, we wanted to do. And that the, the three of us like yeah. getting into a room and talking about video games. So. Exactly. And so I, yeah. I, I'm pretty, uh, you know, I think it's. I think, from my perspective, it's the right thing to do to do not yeah. keep doing weekly Idle I think Thumbs. If Idle Thumbs was a commercial enterprise and there was actually someone above us on the Idle Thumbs org chart saying you mm. have to keep doing Idle Thumbs, then we would probably have right. to keep doing it. <laughs> but if it's just the three of us hanging out talking about video games yeah. and then it's not that anymore, we right. have we have no obligation to do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But, but I but I will say that if it were honestly, I mean, when we said we're going to stop doing the podcast. We were we were not planning to sort of do an occasional Steve cast. Um, it's really honestly only, at least from my perspective, um, only because you guys were so uh, awesome with all your responses that I that it even occurred to us to do anything like that. Um, so, you know, I guess good job on <laughs> ringing a, like a trickle of content out of us that we wouldn't have otherwise done. I'm like Infinity Ward. We will read your complaints. <laughs> oh, oh. So we're announcing the Adelphum's dedicated client. <laughs> right. <laughs> Make your own podcasts and impersonate us. Because <laughs> that's what a dedicated server is. Yeah, pretty much. It's everyone else impersonating Infinity Ward. Yeah. Yeah. Probably is that. Yeah. Anyway, um, after this part, we're going to have a bunch of stupid crap. So um, <laughs> yeah, after the, all the bullshit that we've recorded over the last two days. That we, I thought you were going to say two months, oh, <laughs> you know, a year. Every canceled episode. Get ready for the yeah. next six oh hours. There, there is a there is an older Easter egg in there. Mm. But, uh, spoilers. Spoilers. But uh, yeah, if you hate it when all we do is sit around and laugh at our own stupid shit, maybe you should stop listening now. But if you love gold, game gold, game bloom gold, <laughs> yeah. get get the fuck ready. Yeah. Also, if you love Steve Ballmer. If you love Steve Ballmer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Actually, he's in there. <laughs> Set him free. Oh, also, we have torchlight coats to give away somehow. Oh, yeah, we do. Maybe we could say, come up with a name for the new <clears throat> sporadic cast. And maybe we'll reserve the right to not use any we of them. We make no but guarantees. If you make a <laughs> but ones that we at least enjoy the most, the six that we enjoy the most, or number that is might not be six, but might be one or two. <laughs> we make, no, we make no guarantees. Some number between three and six, I can guarantee it will at least be that. Those people. Greater than or equal to three. Yes. And less than or equal to six torchlight codes. Yeah. So send those in to questions at idlethumbs.net. Weird. Or a tweet. Yeah. yeah. Don't, do, don't do a tweet. Just send it in to questions at idlethumbs.net. You can tweet it also. I'm trying to make this as scattershot and disorganized as I possibly can in the last couple minutes <laughs> so no one wants to hear from us ever again. All right. Uh, so send it in to questions at idlethumbs.net. Poop butt uh, donkey cock country. Faces. Goldgate. <laughs> Goldgate? <laughs> oh, and uh, 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 we probably <laughs> should actually <laughs> say good luck to Nick. Oh, um, it's really awesome. And I will say, fuck Nick. You got <laughs> that. You got a sweet job at a really cool company. Yeah, yeah. congrats. Thanks. Yeah, this has been really fun. It actually, uh, I should say that uh, this podcast probably made it way more difficult than it should have been to make that decision to leave uh, mm. to, to go to, to go to Bethesda. So, uh, uh, but yeah. Um, so all you all you people out there know that. Nick, oh no, Nick I, almost. Yeah, I, uh, I was close. <laughs> it was close. It was close. I would yeah. say 50-50. 51. Yeah. Greater than, <laughs> greater than, equal to. Right. Yeah. You were edged there. out by one percent. Yep. That one guy. Leaders. You were this close. Who just You're said congrats, Nick, and not fuck Nick. <laughs> that was oh man, it. that was the two percent. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but, but yeah, that's but yeah, gonna be awesome. Congratulations and enjoy. Rockville, Maryland. Oh snap! Video game. Wizard, the wizard, the wizard. 
Don't forget to check out the Idle Forums. We've got a great community of active thumbs who've been hanging out for five years, a lot longer than we've been doing this podcast, so they're probably not going to stop now. They talk about what they're playing, schedule multiplayer matches, and all kinds of other stuff having largely to do with... Video games! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, can't get, I can't keep up a consistent tone. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> How do you have enough? See, he ate too many boost bars. <laughs> Jesus. That was one balloon. <laughs> this is Idle Thumbs 50. <laughs> oh, he's got a million emails. And then, mm -hmm. I guess that's all the shit that I was like, that you were looking at before. Just remember 4009. <laughs> that was the daylight, if anyone was curious. <laughs> oh, my hands smell like balloon. <laughs> oh, there's a Dragon Age potion. Oh my god, the ingredients in this magic spell are amazing. <laughs> you should read the ingredients that the wizard's potion includes on the air. Emulsifier. Uh, it's just... <laughs> well, yeah, read the, read the first ingredient. Oh, Jesus. All right, are we gonna go? <laughs> There's not a single pronounceable ingredient <laughs> on that. Elderberry juice. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> That's a wizardly. That is a wizardly. Kind of thing. Thing. Yeah, but everything else is just like xanthan <laughs> gum. What? Oh my god. The wizards try to construct this. He's got his own. Seriously, how like a little pile. Sound... He's just looking at the rest of it. All right. uh, 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 <laughs> elderberry. Xanthan. Uh, check <laughs> DNC red yeah, right. forty. He's got this big list. A big red check next there's to that on one. On Elderberry, there's <laughs> glues of... Well, got those. Um, let me just start from the top again. Uh, oh, Elderberry, all right, good. Good there. Glucuron... <laughs> Alcatone? <laughs> Velociraptor. <laughs> what? <laughs> Drop the violin. Jesus. Glucuronolactone. Yep. l taurine <laughs> DL phenylalanine. I love when there's a little two laws in a row. Yeah, yeah. Phenylalanine. Well, there's yeah, like yeah. the cuckoo. You know, like yeah. C U C the cuckoo. Yeah. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. N acetyl L tyrosine. <laughs> Caffeine. Ginseng extract root. Elderberry juice concentrate. Purified water. And now Vegetable for, glycerin. For mail, this one comes <laughs> from glucosinogenesis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I may have botched that one. Uh. Citric acid. Xanthan gum. <laughs> potassium sorbate. Sodium benzoate <laughs> preservative, sucralose, natural flavors, and FDNC red number forty. Man, they really they really get the crazy one out of the way first. It's yeah. that, but does that mean that it's the most like it is the it should be the the most pre prevalent it's a liquid glucanuka nuka nuka nuka. So you're gonna drink that, right? It's the Idle Thumbs drinking game where we must drink. To toast. The Dragon Age. No, question. we're toasting to the final. Uh, to the final thumbs, we will drink Galuka. <laughs> it's January first, twenty twenty-seven, and this is Idle Thumbs three hundred eighteen. It's November fifth, twenty thirty, and this is Idle Thumbs three hundred and seventy-four. <laughs> oh, we've been doing this so long, and we're the best <laughs> friends still at it. <laughs> I'm so glad you so didn't Jay take did that job, and we decided <laughs> to keep recording this. Podcast, Jay. Did you did you We're finally the... finish Uncharted two, Jay? Yeah, Tell me oh, how the ending was. Now I'm on chapter seven. <laughs> All three hundred thousand of yeah. you will love hearing my latest impressions <laughs> of Uncharted two. <laughs> <gasps> Thank God they included backwards compatibility on the PS seven. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, shouldn't have inhaled so many Chris air canisters. This is the sixth <laughs> anniversary of Chris Ramos' death. <laughs> We're joined as usual by Steve Gaynor. <laughs> the wizard. <laughs> Those jokes haven't died like for we, 30 years. I like that we're apparently decrepit by like our 50s. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. What? Sorry. It's 20 years. Actually, what, 300. I died 350. Like <laughs> episode 350. That's like two years from now. Or not, no, no. Like, that's like, like, it's like five years no, from now. I know. Now. Sorry. It's episode. 3,806. <laughs> <laughs>
This is Auto Thumbs episode 206. We're the best pals still doing this on our fifth anniversary. <laughs> We're the best pals. We're the best pals. I'm so glad Nick's still We're here. We're sending yeah. this episode back in the past so you guys can hear what Idle Thumbs is like <laughs> in 2015. <laughs> Year of the PS3. Oh, yeah. Still using my PS3s. They're amazing now. <laughs> they got all these games. <laughs> oh, man. Everyone's got one. People play them. They're affordable. Nintendo's still putting out games at 4... 4... <laughs> <laughs> yep. That HD Wii is going to show up any time now. Yeah, I heard Patrick said that. <laughs> uh, I still predict them. <clears throat> We've added Blu-ray players to our Natals. You just hold the disc up to it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it plays they're, the film. They replaced Milo with Milo, Steve Ballmer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see you have a disc there. Oh man! Why didn't we actually have a Sega? Turn me back on! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Even games, with- games, games, <laughs> games. Video now that- games. Now that Microsoft started making the HD TV that it displays on, Steve Ballmer will be in your house even after you've turned it off. <laughs> Who needs Milo? You got yeah. Steve Ballmer in there. <laughs> it's a configura- configurable personality. Milo, Steve, Steve Ballmer. Ballmer. <laughs> that's the two, really. Steve Ballmer was Steve the DLC Steve for Milo. Oh, that's <laughs> the. Uh, Milo stays there, and Steve Ballmer also just walks up next to him and just puts his hand <laughs> on his shoulder. <laughs> Thanks for getting the Ballmer DLC. <laughs> I'm going to turn off your TV now. Milo and I are going to spend some time together. What? Jesus Christ. <laughs> With this Waltz and Gromit episode is also a free Steve Ballmer skin for your <laughs> main menu. <laughs> <laughs> not, that, not that we would ever do that, but uh, yeah. some developer could easily, I don't know, like yeah. buy N+, plus, and it also comes with... The Ballmer <laughs> skin? <laughs> Steve, a Steve Ballmer pack. Ballmer, oh, that's Ballmer. <laughs> Where it's just your, your avatar is so there on the main screen, and then Ballmer is just like a cardboard cutout of Steve Ballmer with his, with his elbow on the shoulder of your uh, avatar on the Friends page. It's the ball skin. It's like every, it's just every, every single screen, one, every see. single screen you can ever find, he's always like, see, he's always there. You scroll past the friends list, and it's like arm around the, the guy leaning yeah. on him, right. giving the thumbs up next to your friend's avatar. You're screaming in one of their faces. This sleeping offline friend has Balmer teabagging your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh, so that's that's pretty much guaranteed to be released. <laughs> that's Microsoft's answer to the year of the PS3. <laughs> Shit! The, the it's their year. year. Oh. How can we come back? With we this? gotta put out a custom <laughs> theme with Balmer teabagging your avatars. <laughs> all right, then they all give each other a high five, and there's a yeah. freeze frame. Yeah. <laughs> then that one also comes out on one of the friends lists. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> meta. All of the people giving the high five are Balmer. <laughs> <gasps> Jay Allard sneaking in. <laughs> I'm working on the Zoom. Out of here, Allard. <laughs> oh. Bombers only. Allard <laughs> leaves on his way out the door as Zoom just hits him in the back of the head. <laughs> a Natal thing, whatever the fuck that is. There is nothing. There's no controller. It's the air. Oh, there's that tube, though. Uh, yeah. It's a tube. And isn't you plug your Zoom like into a, that. Like it tube, charges it. A tube uh, that sits there. It's a, like a tube of eyes. <laughs> Sorry, a, a little tube sitting on top of your TV with two eyes would just make your TV look like <laughs> it's me and a towel. The TV is just a mouth. Come hang out with me and Balmer. <laughs> <clears throat> it's November 2009. And this is me. Oh, this this is me. And this is me, Chris Ramo. <laughs> all alone in this house. <laughs> They've all left. <laughs> Talking to myself? <laughs> I'm by myself? Talking, Talking to myself. myself. <laughs> gold game, gold Jeff game, Jeff gold game, Jeff gold Jeff, gold game, Jeff, gold game, Jeff, bloom gold. Gold bloom game. And I'm Jeff Jeff cool. <laughs> cool, gold, cool, gold game. Game. cool 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 game. Cool cool game. Gold gold. Cool game. gatefold. God. Cool gatefold? <laughs> Oh man, Nick and I were just talking about gatefolds. Gatefolds, weird. Everything. <laughs> I'm glad. I that... never knew that they were called gatefolds. What's a gatefold? Exactly. <laughs> it's the thing on the box that, like. Oh yeah, it's a gatefold. It's I'm a gatefold. gold gatefold. Jeff, Jeff, yeah. Jeff, 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 Jeff,
Gatefold, Jeff Gate. <laughs> Jeff Geoff, Jeff Gate. Jeff Jeffries and Bloom Gate goals. Jeff Jefferson. Jeff Jefferson game, Jeff. <laughs> We're just going to regress through all memes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the wizard. Gog. Oh. Goggity Man, gog, goggity gold, gog Jeff gold. Jeff Coach is a name. <laughs> Jeff Yeah, Coach. I know. This is the weirdest yeah. name I've ever Coach, heard in Jeff my life. Coach, who's Jeff Coach? Jeff, it's Jeff a Coat, name, Red like Coat. J-E-F-F-C-O-A-T, <laughs> Jeff Coat. Gold, Jeff Coat. Yeah, exactly. Fold. <laughs> Jeff Coat, Fold. McFoldgate. Jeff Coats are coming. <laughs> Jeff Coatfold <laughs> McFoldgate. Gold game. Cool, cool gold. <laughs> Jeff. Oh, I don't think we ever did cool gold. <laughs> Jeff that untapped. Might be the, the only untapped uh, resource Jeff cool there. Gold? The cool gold. Yeah. <laughs> McColdgate, McColdgate, <laughs> Colgate, Colgate, Jeff Colgate, Goldgate, Goldbloom, <laughs> Gatefold. <laughs> God, we're horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why do we love this? It's such fun, weird stuff to say, though. It's, yeah. <laughs> so many good phonemes are included in all of these things. Cool Foldgate, amazingly well. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Whoa! Whoa oh man, that's Jeff a good Goldblum. one. Oh, my oh. God, that's like a guy's name. Bloom Cold Gold. Bloom. <laughs> we never start with Bloom. No. Bloom, <laughs> now we have Bloom, game. Bloom Gate Gold Fold. Kate. <laughs> Kate. 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 <laughs> the whole family is is, is forming here. <laughs> Kate Jeff Gate Bloom Game Gold Game Bloom Fold Game Coat. Coat. <laughs> when I play Elemental and I have the family tree, the, the, the whole family tree, <laughs> just me. Jeff Jeff Gold will be at the the top of the family tree. Jeff and then Jeff Gold, how did you decide he was? Here? <laughs> well, obviously, why not start with Jeff Goldblum? No, no, that's like in the middle. <laughs> That's uh, like, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, we got him. Oh well, yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum. Just the, you know, 18th offspring of the yeah. third cousin of just the weird sort of Jeff, permeations Jeff eventually you land with Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. That's yeah. the golden age of the uh, of that family. The golden, era. Era. the golden area of Goldblum. <laughs> <laughs> Goldblum's golden area. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's gatefold. It's a Jeff, Jeff's gatefold. <laughs> Jeff gatefold. Gold gates gatefold. <laughs> Coat. Gold coat, bloom gold. <laughs> Sounds like something that you would Gone gold, also. We have to practice typing. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Gate, Jeff over the Jeff Gold. <laughs> Gone gold, bloom gold, coat Jeff over gold, the Jeff Gold, McCool, McCool Gate. <laughs> bloom. <laughs> Jeff Goldbloom. Jeff, Jeff Gate. Anyway, we're joined by special guest Jeff Goldbloom. <laughs> Call yourself Cool no, Cool Game. You're the purveyor cool, of Cool Game. <laughs> yes, he's doing it. Jeff Coat. Yeah, that would be amazing if you if you walked up to Jeff Jeff Gold like T- TMZ style with a camera. Jeff Jeff, do the thing where you say Jeff Jeff Gold. <laughs> <laughs> What? What? <laughs> you know, like what are you talking like, cool about? Cool game, Jeff game, <laughs> gold coat game, Jeff. People, you know, people ask me to like do that. a lot of things, but I've never heard that one Talk before. Talk really slow and say cool, cool game. <laughs> say Jeff gone gold, gold coat. <laughs> okay, I wrote a list for you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I, Jeff a while. cool game, <laughs> coat gone gold, cool, cool <laughs> game, <laughs> Jeff Bloom Kate. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum security like triples like overnight. <laughs> Say cool, cool game. You could probably get 4chan to actually <laughs> oh, I'm sure. pull off yeah. a gold game, gold Jeff Gold attack on yeah. Jeff Goldblum. If people pull that off, we'll come back. <laughs> they would sadly call it Goldblum, Goldgate, Gate, Gate, Fold, Gate, Fold, Gate, Gate, gate. gate. Cool, okay. cool, Gate, game. Gate, Oh nine, Fold, Gate, Jeff Gate, gate, fold. gate, Gate, gate. gate. They call it Gate, Gate, Gate. <laughs> it was originally cool, 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 cool Gate. <laughs> Cool, cool game. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we like this? <laughs> what stupid, damaged our brains? We inflated joke too many we've balloons. Ever made on our podcast. <laughs> we've inflated too many balloons. People ask us why we're stopping the podcast. I always tell them it's, we've inflated <laughs> we've too many balloons. <laughs> thanks. Oh, thanks, Jake. This can actually excel extra strength, etc. Cool, cool game. The recorder just stopped out of protest. It'll log you out. Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going? Oh, good. Half an hour. Uh, the stuff at the end of this episode is going to be pretty good. 
I, was saying, I thought that was the episode. What were we saying? Aren't we done? Well, anyway, anyway, uh, have a good time. Yeah. Make, uh, <laughs> Thanks. What were we saying before? Cool, cool game. <laughs> you're asking, fucking you're know. asking to you pick serious? out one one of like probably saying seven hundred different fold permutations gate, of gate, Jeff Gold. 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 Sorry, <laughs> we have not been spinning. What was the one that came before Jeff Gate Gold Gold <laughs> Bloom? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. We gotta get this right. <laughs> I mean, before that five You know what, we better just record tomorrow, because we gotta, we gotta figure this out. Cool, cool, bloom, Jeff Gold. Oh, we're talking about the future. Yes. <laughs> we're well, glad, we, glad we figured that Sorry, out. We're talking about yeah. Steve Ballmer and stuff. Yeah. Steve Ballmer and stuff. Friends. And then we're talking about and cool, co, cool yeah. game. <laughs> Alright, let's, we should maybe record a podcast. Oh yeah, alright, you guys, let's just power through this. Let's do the whole episode right now. Uh-huh. Dragon Age Impressions, Go. Color your hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, it's a, it's already done. Yeah, it's already <laughs> complete. Last we, podcast was 318 <laughs> days, uh, 24 minutes uh, ago. Oh man, right, posted by was, James Spafford. It was in fact an Out Thumbs podcast. Oh yeah. Welcome to the return of the Out Thumbs podcast. No, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I was no. kidding. Yeah, I, oh, oh. All right. Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't know how we can start this thing. Take two. It's oh. a mystery to me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How are you? How are, who are we'll you? All start in agreement. <laughs> what? Oh no! That and was then we will all say yes. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Who are you? How are you? Yeah. Who? Are, yes. Who is your daddy, and what does he do? What? How, what? How are you? How, who are you? Who are you? Yes. Who is he? Who am I? Who is he? <laughs> Right. Detective John Kimball! <laughs> Classic references on the podcast. Classic. Uh, okay, we should start. Oh, man. Numa Numa? <laughs> <laughs> I saw that on the internet. Oh, man. Zombo Yes. Mm. I heard you can do anything there. Mm, yes. All right. Uh, let's start somehow. What? Uh, so, should I just say welcome to Idle Thumbs? Hello, Idle Thumbs. That's probably a good Thumbs yeah. time. Uh, I'm just going to go. So, this is the Idle Thumbs podcast. We don't know what we're doing, but we we all used to be part of Idle Thumbs. I assume if you're listening to this, you are one of the, the ten people who post on our forums. Or hi there. Yeah, I'm Chris Remo, by the way. Uh, I'm Nick Brecken, and uh, I'm Jake Rodkin. Uh, yes, from the internet. From the internet, we're all from the internet. Yep. Um, I Order guess some bro. of you might be here because you hate me because I was linked on Penny Arcade, and. Uh, it's a good start. You might be here because you don't know who I am. Uh, yes. Uh, you might you might read Shack News, where Nick works. Probably not. And where I used to work. Um, Jake, maybe uh, someone from the Telltale forums is here. Probably not, but you might have read the Telltale Games internet forum. Yeah. Where I post. So so those are all the feasible places I can think of that... that the, <laughs> that's or, a really small group of people. So. Like Dig? Dig. Yeah, maybe we've been dug. If we haven't, please dig us. Uh, it could have come from Google. <laughs> from Google. Potentially. Potentially. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Video games. Should we start this over? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Step one. Decide uh, where the audience is coming from in a list form. <laughs> All right. So. I could do it this time. Right, I'm not going to get through it, but uh, I could try Well, it. give it a shot. I actually don't remember what you said. So. Well, well, I don't think we matter? want to say the same thing over again. <laughs> oh. We're going for something different. Fall in the one. same trap again, exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, now you should just do it. Okay. You're, well, yeah. Welcome to the first Idle Thumbs podcast. Um, I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. I'm Jake Rodkin. I'm back. <laughs> Nick, we can Nick, come back in the room. Oh, Jesus. I just got back. What is it? This is the Idle News Pod Blast for November 6, 2009, and I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. And I'm Jake Rodkin. All right, guys. This is this is the... F- I came back from Bethesda. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> we flew you back at great yeah. expense. We were, st- yeah. we were <laughs> starting to edit this episode together, and one more Far Cry just sat down, too. Showed up. God. Yeah. Well, welcome. How was your first day? Uh, It, it was okay. Oh, good. You're, yeah. not, you're yeah. not actually working there yet. So no. Yeah. This is bullshit. That's weird. Probably shouldn't have gone in. <laughs> uh, we thought we were done, but one more guy wrote in about Far Cry 2. So, uh, Zach, aka Time Doctor, writes, 
If Far Cry 2 is the perfect game, why can't I find any puffins in it? Oh, shit. <laughs> also, my Far Cry 2 is broken. I can't talk with anyone to get missions in the game. It's like I am a social pariah, crying frown face. Oh, man. It is fucking loud in here. Yeah. Let's just get a moment of silence. <laughs> so we're actually with Nick on the jet on his way <laughs> back back to Bethesda. It's weird. Did you guys got through security without a ticket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it was important. We told them it was for idle thumbs. Yeah. The wizard let us through. <laughs> the shitty wizard security yeah. guard. Yeah. He's so he shitty. Doing his job. What was he doing? He was a shitty wizard. Yeah. Man. Ugh, worst wizard. Um, we forgot. This is our last chance before Nick leaves to talk about Quop. Oh yeah, Quop. we gotta talk about Quop. Quop an yeah. awesome game on the internet. Q U O P. Q W O P. Q W O P. Sorry, Jeez. <laughs> just just search for those four letters and you will find this game. I think the name of the game actually might be Athletics. Um, like, everyone calls <laughs> it Q-W-O-P, Yeah, but yeah, it's really called Quop. Or the Apocalypse. And uh, <laughs> this game. This is a game where you have to make <laughs> a man run. Uh, by manipulating individually. <laughs> you can't describe this calf. game. Yes, you can. There's no way. His left calf, his right calf, his left thigh, and his right thigh. You each of the, left calf. the QWOP key, each one corresponds to one of those body parts, and by pressing these keys, you manipulate them in such a way that you can get that this guy. Or they manipulate you. I think, yeah. I think they're sort of half manipulating you at the same time. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, this game... This, this game is a bender. It, it is. It's a... Uh, I mean, we, Nick and I have played this game a lot. Jake, have you played this game? For like 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Did yeah. you win? No. <laughs> we, yeah. I, I was shit yeah. at Quop. Yeah. We discovered Everyone, this game. Everyone's shit at, at Quop. Yeah. Um, I could never get the rhythm down, though, but I always felt like maybe you could. <laughs> well, well, funny yeah, you say that. Funny you say that. Because Nick and I had a Oh, my God. <laughs> a terrible slash awesome slash awful experience. Was that BlizzCon? This was BlizzCon. We were at yeah. BlizzCon. Uh, we, were in the, we were in a hotel room. Yeah, with with probably a lot to do, but not doing any of it. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> probably actual Quop. real work to do. Um, and I, I, Nick, I don't think you were aware of this I was game. not aware of Quop. I told, I, I was like, Nick, have you... Blissfully uh, unaware. Yeah, I don't remember why I, it had come to mind. God, I, this is all coming back to me now, and it's it's kind of painful. Yeah. Like, so... I got it. The, yeah. the first four days of that week are... Mm, we're yeah. anyway. <laughs> um, so I, I introduced Nick to this game. We had our laptops. Oh, you know, this was after we'd played some Diablo 2. Yeah, right. Like, after we realized both of our laptops yeah. still had yeah, Diablo 2 yeah. installed on And we needed something, you know, worse than that game. <laughs> right, uh, exactly. Because like, so, it affect us physically. Um... Uh, so I'm like, oh man, have you seen this goofy thing? You know, because yeah. I'm like, oh, Diablo 2, that's something that we're going to get addicted to and really compelled to play all the time. <laughs> Here's Quop. That'll never happen with Quop. It's a goofy, ridiculous game yeah. that you play for five yeah. minutes and it's funny and then you stop. Look at this bullshit flash so piece of shit. This I, is hilarious. This yeah. is going to be like three seconds of hilarity. Everyone's experience yeah. with Quop is basically you you start playing, you try to press the buttons to make your guy run, you realize how ludicrous and hilarious it is, you laugh a lot, and then you close the window eventually. Yeah. And that was our experience for the that first was our 30 experience. minutes. Then eventually, Nick, you, <laughs> you know, I was, That's right. I, yeah, I, I guess it was on. me. I had yeah. moved on by that point because well, I already had played this game before. Yeah. Nick is like, hey, hey, Chris, check it out. I got my guy to go like 10 meters. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're doing the thing where you uh, like scrape along on the ground. <laughs> and, and Nick's like, yeah, 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 I'm doing that. And, and so I'm like, yeah, whatever. I've done that for like 50 meters. Fucking no, bi- <laughs> yeah. no big deal. I've oh, like snap. wasted. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm not yeah. proud of it, but it's true. I, you know, I, you, I don't think you we can be kinda, proud of any of this. No, you you can manipulate the game so your guy kind of just drags <laughs> yeah. himself along yeah. the That's ground by I've scraping with his knee. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, like some it's very difficult to maintain balance yeah. on your actual yeah. feet. And so I'm like, whatever. And so Nick, I can only assume you that was a that was, was the moment like the gauntlet thrown? That, yeah, the gauntlet like, was thrown yeah and uh you i entered decided, the quab zone are you, you are, are you gonna... a ranked quap player <laughs> I, I don't know are we now probably not i don't There's, think there was any leaderboards maybe the, no you're right there are no leaderboards okay. um, that's what makes it even basic, more mysterious very basic <laughs> a very basic game um and so nick you started really actually sitting down and trying I got to into figure it. out how to play this game yeah how to actually get your it guy took, to run it was amazing because it it it, it it took so long just to decipher the left calf. 
Like, it, like <laughs> right. each, each part of, of his yeah. body was like a little like unit within the core lesson of Grop. Right. Yes. Uh, it, it, it literally took hours that night just to, just to, just to take the first baby steps as it were. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, and then. But you started doing it. I remember at one point you got to the point where you're like, I made it to 20 meters. And I'm like, oh, yeah, are you fucking scraping along again? And you're like, no, dude, I actually ran like 20 meters. It was amazing. I remember you telling me, you were like, this feels amazing. To actually well, yeah, run. I mean, that's what that, that's that's kind of what is great about Quop is that yeah. it's 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 the most basic uh, uh, set of mechanics in the sense that it's well, just it's a the guy. Most basic premise. It's the most it basic is. premise. Yeah, the mechanics are obviously uh, ridiculous, convoluted, and weird. But you're just trying to make this guy run. I mean, yeah. like most games, That's you hold it. one button to do yeah, that. In this game, it's it's like you know, I like if there was a game where you had to like manipulate an aircraft carrier, I would assume that game would be <laughs> right. easier than yeah. making this guy take like seven <laughs> steps. Yeah. Like like not even like the full thing. Just like seven steps is pretty yes. much like. You know, it's an epic endeavor. Yeah. And so at that point, once I realized you were actually starting to get to the point where your guy could take a few strides before he fell on his face or fell on his back or twisted his knees into an impossible ghoulish uh, like yeah. cat's cradle, I at that point, that was like you deflected the gauntlet, which then sprung back at me and hit me <laughs> in the face. And so that was pretty much ruination for us. Yeah. That was like the at rest that of that point, trip was just all we did awful. when we weren't actually covering uh, BlizzCon like physically. <laughs> Was Jesus sit in our Christ. hotel room on our and, and the great thing about that game also is it has that uh, what's the movie um, uh, Chariots of Fire Ch Chariots of Fire yes the uh, the, the Evangelist uh, theme song so there were, uh, there were so dun, 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 two dun, of your laptops dun, both dun, playing the song no at the same because time? it only plays it as when your guy maintains a completely consistent stride right. if you pause if you fuck up yeah it stops and it doesn't start until you've already been running for a few seconds so you have to earn it and so yeah you really have to fucking earn it I've never played a game. That makes you earn every yet, single thing you get as and yet, much as co-op. I mean, and this is why it's so great, because it is reflective of what video games can do. Like, exactly. Like, it takes so much effort, and it's a bunch of bullshit for, like, 99.9% of the... And then, when you finally achieve that perfect stride after, like, eight hours of practice, it's the most amazing thing. It's like, amazing. the graph of that... Uh, you know, is proportional to the, to graphs of other games, but it's just on a much larger scale. Yeah. Like it's just exactly. Uh, it's it's it's, it's, video it's a much stranger relationship. And yeah. I we played this so much. I mean, we got you know we started getting to the point where we were running dozens of meter. You know, we'd we'd get to the point where we'd 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 hit fifty, and then we'd get right. We to hit the, milestones. We'd yeah. get to the um. There's that damn gate at fifty. There's the oh, uh, God, hurdle gate. at the fifty, hurdle, which yeah. is a. a Oh my god, that's an entire other thing to get past. It is once a you've already, literal hurdle. I mean, I mean running is, once 50 you've meters, past that hurdle. like, just getting, if you can run 50 meters in co-op, you're already, that's like, that's already pretty You're amazing. already pretty much a winner. Yeah. Um, but then you've got to actually get past this hurdle. Yeah. And then you've got to get 50 more meters. I've, in fact, gotten to the point where I, had, I was dragging that hurdle along with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, While sliding. Yeah. <laughs> that's the worst. And you're terrified. You don't want to try yeah, to do anything yeah. fancy, like, jump over it, because that could be disaster. Yeah. Um, did you ever actually beat this game, Nick? Well, see, that was the thing. If you remember, if you remember, well, if you get pat, if you get to a hundred meters, that's the end of the game. There was a moment. Uh, I think it was Tuesday morning. Yes. Uh, after this trip. Yes. And I was in the zone. It it was the point where yeah. I had played you, like twelve you get hours. Into a fucking zone. This is one oh of those my games god. Where this as game. Soon as you I've realize, never been in a zone like this. As game soon as before. you realize you're in the zone, um, you're out of the zone, and then you right lose. exactly. But so you get. But when you're in the zone, it's amazing. I have never been more nervous in my life yes. about anything else. Yes. Like like I've had like pretty nerve wracking experience. Nothing comes close to what happened to me and Quap on that Tuesday morning. I got past the hurdle. Yeah, I'm. The music is just you know it's going like it's I, going. It's like fucking chariots of fire. I, holy you're, shit! I'm my mind is dwelling from high school. But then the realization that holy shit, I might beat Quap, and now that's fighting. Yep. It's pushing. Yes, it's pushing on my yes. zone. Like the zone <laughs> the, is the a possibility bubble. Possibility of success, and then it's too nerve wracking. It's all coming at bear. me. Yeah. yeah, I got to ninety nine point nine meters. My oh. face was sitting like. You well, could see, like... You like, stumbled on the jump prompt, didn't you? Yes, that was it. I saw jump. I didn't know what to do. Yep. You don't know how to <laughs> I, jump in this I game. I hadn't been I didn't train to jump. Like, I trained to quap. It yeah. was awful. And I panicked. I saw jump. And I, I fell, fell short. a tenth of a meter. Yeah, but you... And you showed me a screenshot. And then yeah, at that... Yeah. That was painful. And that was so, that was, was so crushing. I think it was later that day. That was the end of my career. That I, I just... <laughs> I, had to, I had to throw in the towel after yeah. that. I think it was... <laughs> 
That's chariots of fire. Yeah. Nice. No one's gonna be able to hear that. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Later that day, I actually got to the hundred meters. You did, and uh, oh, you beat a game. I beat, I beat Quop. Yeah, what and uh, I think I showed you a screenshot, and I think you were dismayed. I was, I was <laughs> a little dismayed. You know what it was? It was like it, it again. It was sort of. It made me think of times in games where I had almost beaten it, right. and then years later had told somebody that, "Oh, I beat that game," and then realized, then realized "Wait, I never beat that game." Yeah, you weren't. I'm even kind of an lying, asshole for saying I beat that game. <laughs> like, but you just, yeah. After a while, you're like, right. yeah, "I'm pretty sure I got. Yeah, to, yeah. I'm pretty sure I got to the end of that yeah, game." Yeah, I did that. Wait, wait a second. No, no, I, oh, didn't. I never did. Shit. But just like everything else in Co-op, that six hours was magnified. To an extraordinary degree. That yeah. six hours between you getting yeah. to 99.9 and me showing you the completed screenshot was the lifetime yeah, pretty much. Of, of you having believed you had completed this game. Quop is an amazing experience. It, Everyone should try to play Quop. I think they should. I think it's, it's important. important. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we agree on that. Yeah. I think that's that's it. That's about all we had to say. Yeah.